is a mic check. This is a mic check. Ladies and gentlemen, it is March 4th, 2024. The weather outside is wonderful. I did leg day tonight. Back day, actually. Deadlifts. Feeling strong. Feeling great. Feeling good to be saying hi to all of you on the west side. Hello, and how are you doing? Welcome to West Side Tyler Live. I am West Side Tyler Bell. Just call me Tyler, please, for the love of God. I am the host, writer, creator, author of the long-running horror and dark fiction podcast, The West Side Fairy Tales, which you can listen to everywhere you get your podcasts. Learn more at westsidefairytales.com and a published author of some 
not very well-known books, but you can help me fix that Go by going and buying one yet again at westsidefairytales.com. I also like to stream arts, culture, and politics here on youtube.com, where <laughs> I, am, I am straining my goddamn uh, Laszlo fucking Cravensworth voice all the way to the max. All the way to the max. We got a good show coming up for you guys tonight. On the motherfucking live stream, we're going to be talking about Republicans trying to steal your lunch break. Uh, we're going to be looking into uh, the newest IDF atrocity? <laughs> Question mark? Well, maybe it is. Who knows? Um, as with all evidence coming out of that region, uh, or all, all, uh, all news coming out of that region, I'm going to double check the evidence. We're going to go ahead and dive down into that today. And check it out just a little bit before we uh, continue on. And also, we're going to be talking about a Halo musician running for Congress. Apparently, the guy who scored almost all of the good Halo games, all of the original Halo games, basically, and Destiny 1, and I believe 2, is running for Congress in Nevada's 3rd District as a Republican, as a MAGA Republican, a pro-Trump, um, died-in-the-wool <laughs> Republican. So... Look forward to that. I, I don't know anything about it. I'm going in blind on basically every topic but one tonight. Nothing to announce right now. So great. So wonderful that I don't have to try and figure out how to announce anything. Um, I am ex exceptionally white. Let's see if my, uh, let, 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 let's see if as per usual, my fucking goddamn camera has reset itself. Configure video. And it has. As so I don't know why it does this. I don't know why or how it does it. It just it just does it, and it doesn't give a fuck. There, I just have to turn off. Literally, just have to turn off the fucking auto, and it works immediately better. And I'm not completely blown the fuck out. Maybe I should have that kind of like bright light on me. I don't know, but I don't think so. Boy oh boy oh boy, boy oh boy oh boy oh boy, boy oh boy. How are you guys doing? I hope you're doing good. Um, it's Monday, finally. We are back to the normal streaming schedule for two more days after this. After tonight. Um, I am going to be streaming only until Wednesday this week. And then I am going to be going and doing a whole bunch of shit to try to move into my new office. Expect delays. Expect interruptions. I am so fucking busy right now that I have actually developed like the real old guy lines under my eyes. I look like a, fu I look like a fucking anime character when I see myself close up into the mirror and not in one of the cool ways in one of the like, Oh shit. It looks like literally somebody has drawn fucking lines under my eyes. Thankfully you can't see them too bad here. But when I look in the mirror and it's full high def, just me facing the results of all of my decisions, it, it gets you. It hurts a little bit, but anyway, I am having, I am having a good time. I think we're going to have a good show tonight. Don't know how big it's going to be. I haven't released any videos on the channel in like a fucking week. Um, so everything's very, very calm right now. Only a few people in chat. Not everybody knows that we're here, but if you are here, that means you are part of motherfucking VOD gang. If you didn't know that. Damn son, where'd you find this? We're talking about VOD gang. VOD gang. 24 7. Allergies alert. Vi gang means that you're part of the fucking crew even when you can't be here. I think I need to change. Well, hold on. Let me six things at once, Tyler. Just sit down and fucking focus. Being part of Vi gang means that even if you're not here during the regular show, that doesn't mean that you're not part of the family. You can always hop over to the Discord. The invite code is in the episode description as always. And once you hop down there and pop over to the Discord, you can continue the conversations, the uh, the concerns, the questions that you might have for everybody you can bring them on over there then pop back here go back and forth so that's mostly just for a consideration for all of you uh you you people that can't show up during normal hours for us eight to midnight by the way by the by uh we might be i might be for my own like mental health uh changing the schedule i it, i don't know yet we won't know until like mid-march but there's a very strong likelihood that the start time of the show is going to get moved back seven hours, right? So it's going to be at 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. 
which is the afternoon when a lot of people are at work and stuff. A lot of people tell me they listen to this at work. I think that's going to be fine. I, I started streaming when it was convenient for me, and I had it at the end of the day. Um, and I might be moving it into prime time hours. I don't think that's actually prime time. I, I can't remember. Prime time's like five through nine, right? I, who cares? Either way, I am going to be probably changing the time that the show's on so I can get a little bit of my afternoon back. Um, this is already part of my like standard work schedule. So if I just push it back then and then I can push some other stuff to later in the day, I think that'd be fine. I'd basically be waking up at like 7 a.m., going to the gym, coming back, reading the newspaper, finally, <laughs> god damn it, and, uh, and picking out my, my topics for the day, announcing the streams, and then you guys would probably get like six or seven hours of heads up. So that might be something I do. It might be something I at least just try out for a bit, see if it fucking tanks the stream completely. Who knows? Who knows? Not me. Not I. God damn. God damn. Oh my god, dude. It is it's officially spring. My allergies are hitting. We get to we're gonna walk that path together. I don't know how bad it's gonna be. Fuck me. I gotta fucking I do this. This is like to get the fucking like Do you guys do that? Reset your fuck the inside of your head so that you can stop sneezing. <laughs> Spider Wave Aesthetic, thank you, Tyler, my favorite live streamer. I love you too, Spider Wave. Not in a not in a parasocial way. In a I I said that just off the top of my head kind of way. Um the other thing is we're getting bigger. Okay. Um everything's kind of chill right now. Like we we haven't hit like a Hondo or anything. It's not a particularly interesting night, but Ooh, Aritos. I kind of threw the membership thing together as a lark when the channel started um, accepting monetary fuck whatever the fuck. When we were allowed to monetize back in November, it was like, hey, do this. And so I just threw something together and I just called it goofs and, and goofs and new goof bootin, right? Um, but that's the only thing that hasn't quite kept up with the channel's like vibe, so to say, as we've kind of grown, because like, you know, th that was before I really started popping off, I think, with the VOD gang shit all the time, or maybe it was right around then. Um, but I might be changing that. Uh, somebody kind of brought it up today and they're like, what do you call your audience people? I don't I don't know. Um, I definitely I, I do not. And don't take this as a like a Barbara Streisand moment. Please do not call yourself TGG because I I don't I feel like that's probably taken by somebody in the trans community already <laughs> and should remain their property and it just does not sound good I, so i don't want to become i don't want to have um i don't want to have dggers vggers and then the far superior and better bred tggers as we will be i want to have something much more interesting so if you guys have uh if you guys have go ahead and comment it comment it in the uh content request or the stream chat section of the um, stream. Oh, I almost forgot. I got to put this on. Go ahead and comment that in the, uh, the the stream chat section of the stream. And maybe I'll check some of those out later tonight. And uh, maybe we'll pick one. Goofs is set in stone. It might be. If we want to stick with goofs, we can stick with goofs. Um, da -da 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 -da. Damn, I work second shift and I love tuning in at work. I'll miss it. It will be like available in VOD form. Though, so, you know, there's that. I don't know. T-Y-G-G? Itachi eyes? Maybe the guy's doing 5G chess. I, I need to watch fucking... I, I need to just start reading Naruto wiki so I know what the fuck people are talking about with their goddamn Sharingan spoopy doopy fucking ultimate instinct shaggy eyes, whatever the fuck that is. By the way, did I say this? Strawberry Haritos tonight. Very nice. Can't listen in the sushi mines, but had to drop a live like. Well, thank you. What the fuck is the sushi mines? Do you work at a restaurant? Or, or are you like a diver? Also, this is everybody's chance. Hurry up and like the stream real quick. We're starting it off. We're popping it off. I'm going to get into the, um, the first segment. I just want to hop into them tonight. Because I have no idea how long they're going to take. God damn, I just kind of feel tired too. I feel exhausted. Ugh. I'm almost done with my audiobook, by the way. 
fucking reading it, if you guys don't know that. Um, so all of you lazy, non-book-holding people who, like me, don't have enough time to sit down and read, you will be able to listen to West by God, hopefully, by next week or so. Um, I don't know how long the authentication process takes. Once everything is kind of... I'm on... I, I just finished... Rec- I just finished uh, editing, final editing, chapter 17 of like 20, and like the last chapters are kind of short, so there's only really like two long chapters, like two like whole days worth of work chapters left, and then I'm fucking finished. And I'm going to have my whole goddamn light. I'm going to have my whole goddamn life back. <laughs> yeah, somebody said, uh, we, I thought we had, by 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., do you mean in your time zone? Of course I mean 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. in my time zone. Eastern Standard Time. Why would I? <laughs> no, Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, I think I'm like GMT minus five, whatever the fuck. Itachi just has massive eye bags portrayed as single lines from his eyes to the middle of his cheeks in this context. Oh, okay. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Strawberry Haritos are your job choice. Based. It's pretty good. I got to say, the lime is still, like, a crazy standout for me. Strawberry is also very good. Strawberry is also very, very good. Very, very good. Time to invest in Allegra. I have been taking my allergy medicine right before I go to bed. And I should have taken it now, I guess. I think it's just because I was driving back and forth. I I ride my bike to the gym and shit, so, like... I breathed in a bunch of that outside air and now I'm poisoned. GMT minus 69 based. Okay, I'm sorry. I was asking for your time zone, LMAO. Uh, EST. 5 to 9 is the prime time. All right, all right. Why is it the good musicians that always end up that way? I don't think it's all the good musicians. I think it's just... I think it's just sometimes... People let you down (laughs) and they mean a lot to you and they let you down. I think, I think Halo's, I think Halo's OST is okay. I think the main Halo song goes so fucking unfathomably hard that the rest of the OST kind of gets like held up by it, but it is like, it's that. It's oh, you know, bum 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 bum, bum 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 bum, and that shit goes fucking hard. But like the rest of it, it's like you know, it's okay. It's like it's like standard OST fare from what I can remember. There's probably a few like standouts. Halo Two with the fucking um, who who was that? I, my 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 brain wants to say was it Breaking Benjamin? On the ODST for Halo 2, I bought that fucking, I bought that um, OST. I I bought it because it was so fucking good. Marty Vottlegang. If Tyler still has this camera by the time October comes around... He won't need a costume. He can just not touch the camera settings and stream as the moon. True. And painful. <laughs> uh, Dude, this is so cool seeing you guys with your little VOD gang uh, color things in here. You guys have been sticking around, man. Halo 2 is Breaking Benjamin. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Halo is the Mega Man 3 of title screen music for the Xbox era. Okay, hold on. Is that the... Mega Man 3. Theme? Dude, okay, this goes entirely too hard. There's 
reason that that should go that fucking hard. There is absolutely no reason that that should go that fucking hard. I, I think that's the first time I've ever heard that. I like Mega Man, but I don't. I never really played Mega Man, Mega Man, because I played Mega Man X first, and I thought it was always going to be the same thing. And I like X way better. But not the entire X series. I tried to buy that, and it fucking sucks. It was so disappointing. Um, like, Mega Man's actually kind of, like, mid overall, in my opinion, as far as games like that go. I know that's, like, the worst thing to say to some people, but I just don't appreciate the excessive, like, one-shot, no-mistakes difficulty, like, at all. But like, It's just not, like, it's not my thing. Um, and like, I, like I brought the, I bought Mega Man 11, which is like, whatever, super. And I couldn't get to the fucking bosses in any of it. And I was just like, I, I just don't like the controls. I don't like how punishing the game is. It's just not for me. Um, and I get that people love that, but like fucking Mega Man, um, X is like, was just the best. And it sucks too, because Mega Man X is by far without a doubt like 17 steps ahead the best entry in the Mega Man X series so like once you've played Mega Man X you've played the first entry in the series and also the best one and you can only be slightly let down from that point on like Mega Man X2 is like uh it, it feels like the same thing but like a not even a Diet Coke version just like you only poured a half a glass of Coke and let a full glass of water melt into it three kind of bring things brings things back in my opinion if I remember correctly, I liked three more. And then I tried to play some of the, like, PlayStation-era version games, of those, and they were just fucking ass. They sucked so bad. I got the entire... I got the entire, like, uh, collector's edition, or whatever the fuck, that they released on Steam, with all of it in it, and I tried to play almost every single entry in there, and I was freaked out. Like, it was a fucking come-to-Jesus moment. It fucked me up. I was like, what, where, where's the good game? Like where where is what what happened here? What what's going the fuck? What the fuck is going on? And then it just sucked. And it was also like the worst emulation I've ever fucking played. Like, and I just download emulators free offline. Just like play snesgames.com. Like, all right, buddy, fucking hit me up with them viruses. Miserable. I'm partial to Be Mega Man Battle Network and Star Wars. I've heard Mega Man Battle Network is good. The only X I tried was Command Mission, and it was the best X ever. It was an RPG everyone hated. <laughs> Dude, Mega Man Legends 1 and Legends 2, which is, like, the most fucking lost game on Earth. Like, I never got to play all of Legends 2, and it still fucking drives me crazy because, like, a friend got it. And I was like, dude, okay, look, Mega Man Legends is my favorite fucking video game. It's like when I'm a kid. It has its it has its issues, but I fucking hundo percented Mega Man X, like, or Mega Man Legends. I fucking I did everything. I played through that game so many fucking times, so many fucking times. I talked to every person. I interacted with every possible pixel on every inch of that map. I knew it inside and out. Like I fucking love that game. And then two came out, and I still think it was like great. The little bit of it that I got to play, but then it was like one of those things back in the day where he rented it. Whoever the fuck I was, I can't even remember this kid. He rented it, and I was having to watch over his shoulder as he played it, like, and like he would give me the, con the controller for like five. Like, I guess you could play a little bit, and I'd fucking <laughs> do like mad good. Like it's not, it's a fucking RPG, like the basically like a JRPG action, like top down world, but it's not highly sophisticated gameplay, but still the guy was too fucking stupid to circle stripe. So that's that. But it just seems so much more expansive and interesting. And there was like snow areas and like the moon. I don't know. There was all kinds of shit going on and I wanted it so bad. And I want a fucking Mega Man legends three and the Mega Man legends, like anniversary pack, but they're never going to make them because ja all Japanese executives are just the most criminal and low form of life on earth. They 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 hate joy and money. They, they they just exist to make pachinko machines. I hate them. I hate them so badly. So badly. <laughs> and the Mega Man 3 title screen is literally a static graphic followed by game start. 
most of them kind of sort of are. Well, I guess, you know, even an X goes. Yeah, okay, so that's a little bit more. The Breaking Benjamin band members were cashiers, and the game is a reference to giving change for a $100 bill. I lie. I mean, probably true. I think that's why it's called Breaking Benjamin, so. Hell yeah, Legends. The tank controls are worth it to play it. It was still one of the better tank control games, too. I might be I might be insane because every game had tank controls back then, but I feel like it had some like a level of maneuverability and like expansiveness to the tank controls. I don't know how to say that better, but like its tank controls worked way better because you could kind of like lock on to stuff and shit and kind of move that way as opposed to like some of the other tank controls at the time, which were real bad. Just joined. Are we talking about Konami or Sammy? We're actually talking about Capcom. I'm just I'm just slandering Capcom mercilessly. This fucking Haritos is amazing. It always sucks to find out your favorite game is like the most hated game in a series. That has never really happened to me. I, I'm just too fucking basic. All of my favorite games are like the best games in their respective series or like the most iconic ones. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, Maybe, like, like, like my favorite horror game, it does not stand the test of time, is Silent Hill. Uh, just because, like, it, it, that game means so fucking much to me. It, like, I, I, I replayed it, uh, remastered or something, ass. <laughs> Un, I just immediately stopped and I'm like, I will not allow this to be soiled in my memory. I will not allow them to take this away from me. Um, my favorite, like, Castlevanias, other than... Or Metroidvanias, other than obviously fucking Hollow Knight, which is like a perfect game, is uh, Super Metroid, which is also basically like a fucking perfect game. Like, I, if you don't like Metroid, like the Castlevania genre is just not for you. Like, I, I don't know what could be done different to make you like that game more. It's just so fucking good. Um, I don't know. That's kind of it, I guess. <laughs> My favorite Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2. Right? Playing it in 1998. You know what I'm saying? Really? Because I don't even... Like, dude, just the difference between... Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3 are one series of games. Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6 are a different series of games entirely. Somewhere in there is shit like case files and code veronica and code zero and i i i just pretend that they don't exist i hear about characters from them people are like oh wow did you know that this guy's from this thing and i'm like i i just assume that krauser is just every single like just he just had to be in the game so that leon kennedy had someone at like peak leon kennedy level to fight because otherwise there's no one on that fucking there's no one on the island or on that, like, well, I guess, yeah, it's the island at the end. But there's no one in fucking Resident Evil 4 that can actually stand, like, a chance against lore-accurate Leon S. Kennedy. He's Leon S. motherfucking Kennedy. You know what I'm saying? So you have to have a Krauser. And I just assumed they created him, and I was fine. And the I find out later, like, oh, no, he's in a video game? I'm like, don't tell me that. I don't care to know that information. He's just a guy with a knife. You know what I mean? It's, it's way better... To see Krauser in Resident Evil 4, both iterations, and just go, of course, of course Leon has this guy in his life. Of course. Like, Leon, bisexual icon, one, on one hand, hot, uh, standoffish, femme fatale Ada Wong. On the other hand, uh, fucking Scarface Krauser. On the both feet, with ankle chains around him. Um, what, 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 what the fuck's Claire, Claire Redfield's brother, <laughs> Chris Redfield, Chris Redfield, begging him to, to please, please, goddamn, impregnate my sister, bro. Resident Evil on Dreamcast is hilarious because Code Veronica was like new graphics and Re, RE2 and 3 were 640p PlayStation upscales. I, I'll always miss like... Kids today, 
they really like you'll never know and you don't need to but i will always sort of miss the like oh shit like that's what that person's supposed to actually look like just that that sparkly blocky everything moves like this you know like just, <laughs> give me the serum <laughs> Somebody gets shot, wah, and then you see like that character model bent over going, bah, bah, yeah. <laughs> it created some of the most fucking like legendary moments of all time. Like before we had, uh, whatever they're called, Bethesda, is that, who, is that who makes, I always forget if it's Bioware or Bethesda, whoever makes all the goddamn Fallout games, the new ones, you know, that they never like seem to manage to program their fucking mesh work or whatever the fuck, their characters are always disintegrating and shit. Do you have that now? But, like, back in the day, man, me and my friend used to crack up laughing because we would walk around. Like, Cincinnati gets foggy. And I remember we were walking home one night after doing, like, hanging out at some other person's house. And we were walking through the fog just going, like, like, we just do the, blah, 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 blah. Ka, ka, ka. like, making fun of tank controls back in the day was, like, it was great. It's never coming back. It, it, it's... It's a stolen joke if I hear some f child, and by child I mean a 28-year-old, trying to talk about fucking tank controls like they were there. You know what I mean? Like, people, like, you'll never understand. Like, the reason everyone likes Mario 64 isn't just because it's, like, a really good game. Moving the stick like that and having fucking Mario go in every direction was crazy. Like, that shit was wild. Like, they, bl they bragged about it. There was a whole game called Glover, which was just a glove on a ball that could throw the ball and, like, walk on it. And it was just showing off the fact that you could move around in 3D without tank controls and, like, without having to be on, like, a pre-printed fucking, like, a matte background. It was gnarly, man. Bethesda, Bethesda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Leon, marry that boulder-punching asshole, his sister. What about Helena Helena Hel, Hel, uh, Helena from Resident Evil 6? Wouldn't know, didn't play it. Too fucking cool. I, I just hit, I hit a point, man, where I was fighting Wesker for the, like, sixth hour in a row, fucking ass-punching a boulder like it owed me fucking money or I owed it money um, in the middle of an active volcano, and I just went, like, I think this is peak. <laughs> This is, I'm beyond sharks. I, like there, there is nothing. It's it, it's a it's a boulder in a volcano moment. Like fuck jumping the sharks. Like the Fonz has nothing on this. And then like RE6 came out, and I'm like, I'm good. I, I just don't need. I don't need anymore. I don't like the co-op aspect of it. It really fucking ruins it, in my opinion. Like I don't mind the escorting Ashley Graham is not the worst thing ever. It really isn't. Like it's fine. I prefer the alone sections because they're very fucking unsettling. Like running into areas and trying to figure out like what in the fuck is going on in this arena? What's going to happen? Do I have to get down in the water? Oh, I've got to get down in the water. Uh, like that shit's the fucking best. I don't think anybody played RE6. It was, it was uh, panned on release. I remember people talking so much shit about it and I was like, I'm not fucking surprised, man. Because it, it's, it's a thing in my mind. So, like, this is a, a standard thing. I mean, I guess I can just tell you guys this as a horror author. There are... There are three stages to, to horror, right? There is... Well, I guess there's maybe more. Let me just articulate. There's three main stages. Which is... Uh, first blush basically like your introduction so there is the unknown right and your characters have their first blush with it finding a zombie the first zombie attack uh you know the first murder at a camp where people are like how in the fuck could anything do that how could something do this look how high he is up there gunter you know like that's the first moment that's when like horror starts like that's like the the tease and you're like fuck yeah and then after the first blush, you have the hunt, which you're trying to fucking escape from the thing. That is peak horror. That second part, peak horror. 
All right, that's where all the good shit happens. The longer you spend in the hunt without either killing off all of your cast or you know getting to a point is like people will have to sp- suspend their disbelief more and more because you either have to either the thing has to maintain a certain level of danger right whatever your creature is your monster your individual either they have to maintain a certain level of individual uh, of, of danger right you have to start sacrificing people to them basically in a way that would make sense that's where you get like a lot of movies you're like why is this person dead it's because you have to establish that this this individual this thing is a continued threat Uh, in some sort of way to maintain the tension. But eventually you will have to get to a point where the threat is neutralized to the plot. You don't have to necessarily like take it out or make it no longer dangerous, but basically the threat is no longer a threat anymore because either your cast has taken it out or it has taken your cast out basically. And then you get to like the kind of end, right? The third section is the like that's the like peste de resistance right that's that that's the money that's the how you how the money shot if you're actually good at horror it's either in the neutralization you know which you kind of like let everybody off the hook either your whole cast dies like kind of deal like something like hereditary right uh bad end or good end your final girl or who what have you you know fucking deep blue sea your sharks you manage to neutralize the threat by fighting back and then your your cast wins it's kind of basically the only two endings for these kind of things that third section has to not be very long it cannot be very long because the longer it lasts the less the thing will seem threatening because you have to maintain people's fighting back against it you you kind of have to have to turn into like a war movie or an action film which is why even sequels that continue on too long in any franchise eventually get to like, actually this person is the 17th son of the person who originally killed him in, you know, 22, eight and, and, and they've got the special power. Or if it's a zombie thing, you know, you're in season 20 of the walking dead where everybody's wearing fucking like stormtrooper outfits or whatever. I have no fucking idea what's going on in that show anymore. And, you, you get to a point where you have to basically turn everything into an action film. With Resident Evil, the further you get from your initial event, which is just literally the Arclay Mountains, you always start in the Arclay Mountains. Maybe you go a touchback, which all have to end in bad ends, basically. Or like, you know, it's Secret War shit because you can't let anything that happens before Arclay affect the plot or let any of those characters run into main characters in a significant or un- inexplicable way kind of deal, right? They have to fucking skidoodle, skidoodle out in, in a different direction. So you always have to start at Arclay Mountain, even in the remakes. From Arclay, you can do a pretty solid job of getting all the way to Resident Evil 3, which is where it starts to tip. Because Arclay Mountains, right, even though you're like stars, you're crazy. Stars. The threats are so intense and you're so like, you're unarmed, you've crashed your fucking helicopter, you're in so much danger, this outbreak's kind of all around you and maybe bigger than you think, that you're a little bit overwhelmed. It's a video game, so you have to survive, basically, right? You have to make it to the end, otherwise people are going to be like, well, what the fuck? You know, you have to put in some like, deep plot reason why you're self-sacrificing, but even then, there has to be somebody that survives you. Every survivor naturally you're going to want to try to bring them back in a latter game in resident evil 2 you're a uh sister of one of the resident evil 1 characters right and then also just a guy that works for the police force this is just some dickhead on his first day at work literally his desk is set up with his his welcome to raccoon city party pack on the desk and then fuck shit hits the fan and, and it goes crazy so, like, in the outbreak stage, it's kind of still the same time period, really, as Resident Evil 1. But now you have a bunch of characters, people are drawn to the characters, and you're going to kind of want to bring them back. Also, what the fuck happened to them? Because Resident Evil 2, we nuke the fucking city at the end, which is the most reasonable thing. You know, Raccoon City gets turned into glass. Resident Evil 3, we have Jill Valentine. We bring back Jill. Jill is hot. 
She's got her blue low cut top on. We are fucking playing to the fanboys. Not in the remake. She's not sexy enough. I had to download a mod. Blah. Whatever. Um, by Resident Evil 3, you have like, she's not bothered by zombies anymore because she's been fucking wrecking them. Honestly, like most of the people aren't that intimidated by zombies by the second or third act of, you know, the, the, the show, if it's even a three act show with her, she's like "Ah, zombies, you know, somehow I'm still alive. You have to introduce something that's a literal unkillable threat to up the ante to make it so like, okay, we can bring this character back. We can continue this franchise but we have to up the stakes to up the stakes from Arklay mountains, which is like at the very end, you're finding maybe some like experimental tech, like, okay, I kind of get it. You know what I mean? Like there was secrets down here and it's like a nice reveal, a little puzzle box kind of open up for you. Like, Oh, this is kind of cool. There's a shotgun on the wall. What happens? Oh, it's a fucking trap. Jill sandwich, whatever the fuck. By the time you get to three, you have to up the ante to like, okay, not only is it zombie monsters, it with tentacles, but it has a fucking flamethrower and a rocket launcher and a goddamn minigun. How about that motherfuckers? And that's kind of like, okay. And for some people it works for some people it doesn't. And, but then you have to do nemesis, right? And nemesis whole thing is it's hunting stars. So now we have this whole deal where it's like, okay, are the stars people like, do they just work for the cops or are they like the best paramilitary force in the history of mankind? Because they seem a little like like Resident Evil for a place that the the mayor or whatever, at least the chief of police specifically, who's an asshole, the chief of police specifically, who should be kind of trying to ankle his police department, has happened to hire f- literal special forces operator grade fucking talent to to his fucking police force. So it's full. You got fucking Bert Barry Burton, Chris Redfield. Wesker's a fucking uh, a sneak thief and a cunt, but whatever. Even Rebecca Chambers is all right. Uh, Leon S. Kennedy is just a fucking desk sergeant. You have a few other people that are pretty badass as well. I mean, even Brad Vickers, he gets stabbed, but he's all right. You know what I mean? Like, he flew the helicopter. He made it all the way to getting eaten and fucking right in front of the goddamn uh, the, the doors. Um, But, like... By that time, you have to have them popping off. So, like, and you have to be, she's kind of, like, sneaking through, the, like, the absolute remnant. So, you're giving her crazy shit kind of off rip, you know. And then you, you're getting fucking grenade launchers. You're getting all sorts of fucking crazy cool shit. There's stuff is happening. You're hanging out with literal mercenaries that somehow Claire and Leon never really ran into. You've got Hunk out there fucking running around. <laughs> Fucking with his bug eyes, blowing everything away. The sewers are full of, like, the biggest fucking monsters you've ever seen. No idea how, like, we didn't run into that in the other sewers, like, right down the street, you know? Hey, there's a giant alligator in one chart chunk of the sewers, okay? But not in the entire sewers. Over here, it's fucking B.O.W.s, okay? It's a different part of the sewers. This is where a different water goes. <laughs> fucking... Uh, Nemesis is chasing you through the entirety of this and you're getting like, it's just absolutely fucking bonkers riding on trains that I didn't know that there was a subway in Raccoon City I mean I guess okay fine I I, 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 I dig it darling uh, clock towers are fucking exploding not in the fucking you don't even get to do the whole clock tower mission people are getting infected they're getting cured every aspect of the city down to it feels like um, uh, your, your, your basic, fu- like, I, I'm surprised they didn't have something where it's like, you go into a fucking McDonald's. They might have, and I forgot. And like, it's like raccoon city McDonald's and the manager's like secretly like a fucking like Lieutenant grade officer at fucking, at, 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 at fucking, you know, uh, umbrella headquarters. We go into like the fifth or sixth fucking underground mega lab that is 15 fucking stories deep. You have to ride lab giant elevators down into or whatever the fuck they're everywhere, you know? And so like you, you hit that point and it's like, okay, what are we going to do after this? And some genius at Capcom said, we're going to go to Spain and pretend like nothing happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got Spanish zombies now. We're going to call them Ganados. And then on the set, but like the fourth one, spiritually, you restarted. Now you've got a new type of zombie. You've got the Ganados, right? 
Um, and like, that's cool. Cause they're the different vibe. They can use weapons most importantly. Cause what do we say? You have to up, you have to up the ante. So even basic Spanish zombies chucking scythes at you by like the third fucking zombie. All right. Heads coming off, turning into like fucking giant, all that kind of cool shit. Then that fucking, that four should have been basically the end of everything because four is a thrill ride start to finish there's almost nothing really scary about it there's a lot of good like creepy kind of things you know maybe if you feel overwhelmed by crowds and people and and head bags but you get the first intro scene to it is like you know if you compare it to our clay you're like okay dogs have chased me in i'm in a fucking gigantic house it's empty the house is fucking empty my fucking like coworkers are dead or screaming on the radio. I have to find team two. I have no idea what's going on. It's a horror game. Fucking the first big set piece of Resident Evil 4 is you literally just fucking doing gun crime to an entire village. Like you walk in, they're like, oh, do you guys just set my fucking you guys just set my ride on fire on a cross in the middle of the town? Cack, 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 cack. Okay, people are running at you. Like, do, does the guy always have the bag on his head? Or did he, like, look out there and there's, like, some fucking hot, fucking dirty blonde dude running around fucking cracking his neighbors in the fucking head with 9 millimeter parabellum. And he's just like, oh, shit, hold on. I'm going to go get this motherfucker, you know? Just literally blowing people away 10 fucking minutes into it, probably. I want to say 10 seconds, but it takes a little bit. You're just popping off. And then from there, it's insanity, right? Like you, you get to points where you're fighting giant fucking fish with spear, infinite spears, like fucking Ahab. Uh, There's giant castles full of like roller coasters and insane things. Everything's fucking gnarly as shit. By the end of that, you shooting an RPG is like the least, uh, like, okay, of course, yeah, <laughs> special, it's literally like, okay, we, we know you've shot RPGs, this one's red, okay, so like, how do you fucking top that, because at that point, you're so beyond the literal pale, that you can't kind of, you can't scale back, because everyone's like, I want more Resident Evil 4, and so they're like, okay, so I've got to up it a little bit, make it more exciting, make it a little bit more intense, and so they're like, Japanese people are like, you know what the scariest thing is? Africans. <laughs> a black man with a megaphone. Um, and then you start five, and five is just off the fucking chain. Just like gigantic crowds of dudes. Everybody has guns right off, basically, uh, off the bat that time. If I remember correctly, they're shooting like fucking little, little AKs. Uh, there's and megaphone dudes, people are exploding. It, it's just absolutely like balls to the wall from the start. There's like, nothing remotely tense about it. The, the char- creatures that would normally be like the entire, you, you're trying to figure out how to get past them for like 10 minutes, just trying to not spend ammo on them in any other resident evil. You're like killing 15 or 20 of them in an elevator going up scene Every 10 minutes, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, uh, uh, fucking, hey, Shiva, put your hand on that button for like five minutes. I've got to kill everyone that comes down this hallway. She's like, all right, you know, you want to switch out with me? Fucking, hey, here's a grenade. It's fucking insanity. And it, it it hits a point where it's kind of like compression. You know what I mean? Like audio compression where you just hit a ceiling where I feel like it makes you numb. Like I, there was points of it where I was like, I... I don't know why I can't enjoy this anymore because nothing like led to it. Like there's not a moment of getting like into the castle, even like in resident evil four where you're slowly like, okay, I'm going to pick my way through these guys. I'm going to try to, you know, sniper. They've got me at a real disadvantage because they're shooting fire arrows, whatever the fuck this guy's got to give multiple people with cannons. And then by the time I got to resident evil five, I'm just like, all right, like I guess I got to save ammo here and then do this and fucking, Hopefully Shiva doesn't die again because her AI is just on one. She keeps eating all my fucking yellow herbs, motherfucker, or whatever. I can't remember what it was that she would constantly use, but it would irritate the shit out of me. And by the time you get to the end of it, you're like, Wesker? Okay. Jill Valentine is ruined. (laughs) 
people talk about ruining uh, characters. Jill Valentine coming back in five was the biggest slap in the face I've ever got. First off, she was like an icon to me as a kid. I was like, she was like one of my like video game girl crushes, right? It was like Jill Valentine because she was a badass like ex cop or whatever the fuck chick who like, you know, solved problems. She was could pick locks. She could play the fucking piano. She was super cool. All right. She fucking, she solos, Resident Evil 3. There, she doesn't even need really that much fucking help except for the dipshit mercenaries that get in her way anyway. And like, that's, you know, it's it's minimum. She fucking blasts a guy with a fucking rail cannon. It's really cool. At some point, um, between that and fucking Resident Evil 5, I don't know, maybe some other dumb fucking game, they go to Wesker's vampire castle, whatever the fuck, and he teleports, slaps the shit out of her through a fucking window and turns her blonde and puts her in like the lamest fucking one piece Tomb Raider skin suit. And then she it's Jill Valentine, my 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 fucking my 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 fucking Jill sandwich, absolute queen. Doing dumb fucking backflips. And you gotta shoot a gem off her chest with a sniper rifle. And you're like, who gives a fuck at this point? Like, this is so stupid. Why is she blonde, man? She had a perfectly fine hair color. Like, why the fuck? I didn't even recognize it was her for a second. I was like, what is that what it was supposed to be? But like, why the fuck is she fucking blonde and dressed like a moron? Like, this is so stupid. And then it just got fucking worse from there. God damn it. <laughs> oh, bug heart baddie yes he slapped the brunette right out of her he really did re5 is not impossible to remember because nothing of interest happens i can only remember the things that were so fucking ridiculous that like they stuck with me the boulder will stick with me forever but it is a game that is so kind of fucking boring throughout that like I was surprised that the boulder stuck with other people <laughs> like they remembered because it's not a big part of it. I mean, it's in a very irritating mid late 2000s QTE tap, 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 finally get it fucking done. You fucking ass punching a goddamn boulder, whatever the fuck. But like it finally gets fucking finished. Right. And then like some other shit happens. I remember shooting rockets at Wesker and he would catch them like this, which is awesome because it's not how they fucking work in real life. <laughs> like it's just so stupid. <laughs> oh man. I don't know. And then after that, I was just, I, I, I couldn't fucking, I, I, uh, the mercenary section of it was probably the best. And I was like, this is just a not, this is a horror game trying to be an action game level controls. And, like, this is, like, a God of War, not God of War, Gears of War level type vibe, like, like thing, like, you know, it's just, like, uh, I, I just, I don't, I don't like it. Like, I, I, it's fun for, like, a bit, and then you're, like, oh, I've hit peak this. Like, my your body will just fucking reject it, or it's the one thing you'll ever want to do because it hits the Skinner box part of your brain. It's hilarious that someone saw a garbage film, Jim Kata, and was inspired to make Masterpiece RE4 over it. No way. That's not real. Is that true? It's amazing. <laughs> RE4 water level with 20 plus shield dudes. Yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. I, that shit kills me. RE7 reboots again with Spooky Swamp Family, but Alpha Chris Redfield on his fourth rodeo shows up and punches the roof off a house. This is true. <laughs> RE7 couldn't escape it either because RE7 tries to start off as being like, you know, hey, man, this is like the Blair Witch, but like Resident Evil and like, oh, fucking cool. And then you get to like the next part and they're like, but also like. But also like it's fucking Resident Evil 7, just so you understand that like it's fucking <laughs> this shit's going to pop off. We have to we we can't we can't let you just beat a tyrant like at the end of Resident Evil 1. It's going to have to be a squishy black biomass 
super monster that does squiggle dances everywhere. And they're like, okay, what about Resident Evil 8? And they're like, don't get mad. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. You have to promise that you don't get mad at me. Like, okay, what, what's, what's RE8 going to be about? Werewolves. <laughs> Mother fuck. <laughs> Start fucking beating their ass. RE6 has the logo which someone once said looks like a woman 69ing a giraffe. What? RE6 logo? Oh my god, it does. Not 69, but it does look... What the... Okay, this will be our last little bit here. Don't show me that. Somebody drew it immediately after. But look, yeah, it does. I feel like anybody can... If you're sufficiently brain poisoned, anybody can see this. This is somebody fucking like drew it over the top. That is... That is fucking hilarious. <laughs> That's fucking ridiculous, dude. Oh my god. Okay. I'm going to switch over topics, okay? Ladies and gentlemen. See. Ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you're here, you know that I'm a bit of a lefty. People do say I'm a bit of a lefty. Um, I'm not as uh, psychotic, I guess, as you would say, as uh, other people that are on the internet. But I do appreciate the working man because I was a working man. And having jobs sucks and having to deal with bosses and shit is a misery that I think we all can say is fucking miserable. I, there's no way to, there's no way to fancy it up. Uh, I'm pro union. I am pro labor pretty much uh, off, off fucking rip. I don't even give a shit. Like you'll have to tell me three times that somebody in labor is fucking something up before I even like give you the time of day. Like, okay, fine, fine, fine. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Kentucky leading the nation has um a very real possibility of removing legally removing the requirement for bosses to give you a paid lunch break or any rest breaks during the day look i know it's a crazy state's a commonwealth but we're bringing slavery back Make America great again, not eight, not 1950s, 1850s. We're going all the way back. Um, I, I have no compunction saying that removing uh, work breaks and rest breaks is just a fucking step back towards slavery. I have no compunction saying that at all. And I think that, that it, 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 it should be kind of like flex like that. Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Kentucky politicians are trying to bring back slavery bit by bit because I don't know what the fuck else this is. I'm going to read the article. Um, I will put it up on the screen for you. This is from the Courier Journal. Shout out our local newspaper for another couple weeks until I leave. Um, support your local journalism. They are doing stuff like this. Your streamers that you can, you can support me if you like me talking about stuff. By the way, you can always send a super chat. You can always uh, donate some members. You can always become a member and get access to sick ass emojis. But if you have to support anybody um, and you're choosing between someone like fucking Hassan or even like Destiny and you could choose local journalism, try the local journalism. Just try it for a little bit, okay? <laughs> So, this is, could Kentucky workers lose lunch breaks? Bill repealing right to breaks advances. By Rebecca Grapevine. I heard it through the grapevine. I bet she's never heard that joke before. <laughs> it's gonna make her lose her mind. Ooh, I heard it through the grapevine. Joke. Anyway, sorry. Frankfurt. A House committee this week approved a bill that would eliminate Kentucky workers' rights to lunch and rest breaks. It's just straightforward. By the way, I'm not doing a lefty interpretation of this where I'm like, well, if you see the deeper meaning of the bill and you kind of like, if you work sideways from it, like, will you get to it? No, no, no. Like conservatives eat fucking 10 pounds of shit through a fucking inch wide straw. You are stripping rights from workers. Republicans are stripping rights from workers. 
Of course, it's this Wil Wilford Brimley. Like this motherfucker is built like he he is built like he wants to be sitting on the fucking uh, whitewashed porch of a fucking plantation. Like he's got the most hit him harder. <laughs> this is the most whip that boy harder I've ever seen in a human being in my life. Like, dude, he's he's got the whole vibe. This is the whole. Bring me some iced tea and tell them two in the back they need to work harder. Overseer, where, how many of my boys have you whipped today? Like, he's got that whole vibe. I don't give a fuck. We're in Kentucky. He can eat my shit. He's probably related to slave owners, unironically. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, Kentucky law currently requires employers to give workers an unpaid lunch break in the middle of their shift. It also requires paid 10-minute breaks for every four hours worked, as well as time and a half overtime pay on the seventh day of work in a row. If enacted, House Bill 500, sponsored by Representative Philip Pratt, Republican Georgetown, would repeal those requirements. I really, I unironically hope this dude has a fucking massive aneurysm just right in front of his grandkids. I, I would love to find out that his last fleeting moments on Earth were watching, like, whoever he loves watch the fucking life drain out of him. Like, Ugh! <laughs> Grandpa, what's happening? Like, I want, I wish that on you because you're, you're stripping rights from workers. I don't feel like it's excessive. Like literally fuck you. Like, fuck you. You piece of shit. You rat. Fuck. Fuck you. Like, like, I, like right. Like, am I crazy? It's not like I'm like, I'm, I'm fucking popping off about some like niche. Um, who knows how it's actually going to be put in place? Like, this is the step before the step. You know, if we keep continuing down this road, we we might have a... a da -da -da -da. But, like, in this case, it's just like, no, you just have no longer have a fucking right to lunch. <laughs> you don't have a right. They can fire you. It's a right to fire state. So if you stop to eat in the middle of the day, you can be fired. If you take a break, you can be fired. Because when you have the breaks set into law... They can't fire you for taking a break. They can't tell you, say like, oh, well, you weren't working. You can be fired. You know what I mean? It's your fucking break. It's your, fu it's your fucking break. The middle of the day break is your fucking break. Dude, it is insane. He's trying to take your lunch break away. If you're a Republican in Kentucky and you voted for this fucking clown, literally you're a dumb fuck. I, you're just stupid. You're stupid and you deserve to be disrespected by people. That's it. You're just a fucking moron. There's no like, I'm trying to reach out across the aisle and like understand where you're coming from. You're just a dumb fucking idiot. You're, you're, you're fucking white trash. I hate you personally. You disgust me. I, I, I hope the fucking undercarriage of your favorite truck rots out and you fall through it onto I-64 going 85. I, I just, you're, you're so fucking stupid for voting for this moron. And all of the people that are, co that are co-sponsoring the bill. The bill has drawn the opposition of organized labor groups and others, including an employment law attorney. Federal law does not require employers to offer lunch or rest breaks. And Pratt said the purpose of this, his bill is to modernize Kentucky labor law to match federal law. This fuck, if you have this hairline, you're not allowed to, allowed to talk about modernization. If you're built like this, if you look, if you look within like an 80% match of Wilford Brimley's uh, diabetes, if you look within 80% of that, you're not allowed to talk. You're not allowed to use the word modernize. It's just, it's not for you anymore because you don't even know what it fucking means. You're, you're trying to bring shit up to fucking 1990s standards at this point. Like, this, this dude fucking still, like, is lamenting the fucking death of Reagan. You know what I mean? Well, how long ago was that? Was that fucking, like 20 years ago? He probably is. <laughs> that actually was a minute. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, he's in Kentucky's second, 60, 62nd uh, district. Fuck him. Pratt said the difference between the state and federal labor law creates confusion for Kentucky employers. It's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. You just get a half hour lunch break. It's all, it's written out so fucking specifically. This guy's just an asshole. We'll get deeper into it. You won't be surprised to find he's a small business owner. <laughs> Pratt said employers can still provide lunch breaks and rest periods if they choose to. And his business, a landscaping company... Can I say that again? A landscaping company. A land. I got them out in the fields. I got some hard working, hard working young men for me. People don't understand what it takes to make a dollar these days. I give them a good break. I treat my boys good. <laughs> I gotta say. 
<laughs> if you if you are if you work for this guy, by the way, if you work for fucking I don't know whatever it is, but let, let's see what Philip Pratt Philip Pratt landscaping. Let's just fucking light him up. Mo better Kentucky and isn't it Pratt's lawn and landscaping? Philip Pratt. There you go. Oh yeah, native Georgetown. Okay, so it's Pratt's lawn and landscape uh, out of Georgetown. Of course, this is his fucking website. Jesus goddamn fucking Christ. Absolute fucking dog shit. President and owner. There he is. Graduate of Scott County High School in the University of Kentucky. Well, in the UK. He was a member of the Alpha Gamma Rho fraternity. Do you see in the University of Kentucky or the actual university or like <laughs> the United Kingdom? 92. I knew it. Married to the former Martha Jane Knave. The fuck does that mean? Of course, their daughter works for the goddamn company. All right. So, yeah, he has a fucking, he has a goddamn, the, the stupidest looking shit I've ever seen in my life. He is going to permit you to take a break. He's going to let you. He's just going to let you take a break when he feels like it. Like, if you deserve it. You know what I mean? Like, there, there's no fucking equality there. So you can get fucking just shit canned. Pratt said the difference between the state and federal law creates confusion. I don't know whatever that. How could you lose? Pratt said employers can still provide lunch breaks and rest periods um, if they choose to. In his business, a landscaping company will continue to offer those breaks. Pratt is also the sponsor of a bill that would weaken the state's child labor laws. They, they, dude, this, these, these motherfuckers want slaves. This dude just wants fucking slaves. I don't give a shit. I'm a hard working man. I, 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 to, to, to say such things about me, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. If you watch this, I know you probably will. Like, fuck. Guys like this usually Google themselves. If, if your fucking aide passes this on to you, go fuck yourself, Philip. Like, fuck yourself and your stupid fucking wrinkled ass, you piece of shit. I fucking hate you. I'm a Marine. I'm a former United States Marine Corps infantryman. I fucking hate you. You are a fucking blight on the United States of America. You're unironically a piece of shit. As a veteran, you fucking disgust me because you're no better to me than the goose-stepping fucks that we killed back in 45. You're filth. You are filth. Like, if, if, you, if you pop by and you want to understand how I feel about you, goddamn. The elimination of rest and meal breaks is particularly concerning to Michelle Henry, a Louisville employment law attorney at Craig Henry PLC, who called the measure simply unfair to employees who are spending eight or more hours a day at the workplace. They should be entitled to time off to eat and to engage in other activities, Henry said. Eliminating breaks increases the chance of injuries and burnout. Dwayne Hammonds, director of wage and hours for the State Department of Workplace Standards at the Education and Labor Cabinet, brought up similar criticisms. Paid breaks and mealtimes are essential workplace standards that contribute to the mental and physical well-being of each and every employee we have in this commonwealth, Hammond said. He pointed out that Kentucky's labor law has mandated breaks and seventh-day overtime for decades. By the way, taken away, you can work seven days, they, literally, just nonstop. They'll just work you nonstop. You can't complain because you'll be fired. They take away your overtime. You don't get nothing. Just You don't, you don't get nothing extra. If you're, if you're the kind of fucking, and I'm going to say this word uh, with the capital B on it, if you're the kind of fucking bitch who is just like, oh, why don't you just work a little bit harder? I like putting them hours. You are a fucking kept pet. You are fucking, I, I, I can't use the actual word because I, I don't want to, it, 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 it's offensive to other people, but you're a fucking kept pet, all right? And you deserve no respect. If, if someone loves you, they're doing it, as a, it's a mistake, because you, you're the fucking worst person ever. Non-stop work. Non-stop work, you don't get a fucking thing extra. Nothing. You're Sunday gone, Monday through Sunday. Sunday through Monday, ho. <laughs> Nothing. You don't get an extra fucking penny. And if you complain, they're going to fucking fire you because it's a right to fire state. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. The bill could also open the door for employees to not, employers to not pay workers for travel for long commutes to and from distant work sites, and even travel between sites during the workday. Employers would have no liability for not, playing not paying employees who must travel to several locations for work, such as HVAC, repair work, plumbers, electricians, landscapers, construction workers. <laughs> Organized labor groups and the Kentucky Center for Economic Policy, a left-leaning think tank based in Berea, also opposed the bill. 
Yeah, he's, that's big money Berea right there. Why the sudden urgency? To, why the sudden urgency to repeal laws that are in place to protect Kentucky's workers? Because they fucking want slaves. <laughs> they want fucking slaves. All fucking, all fucking Republicans that support this shit are pro-slavery. That's it. You're pro-slavery. You want to fucking strip the fucking working man of his rights. Which, when he doesn't have rights anymore, what is he? What is a working man without rights? He's a fucking slave. Is exactly what it is. Taking his money, taking his off time, taking his fucking weekends with his kids. Who the fuck do you think you are? And I know it's her and all that shit too, but like quite literally losing my fucking cool. It insanity, fucking insanity. Atkins represents the Kentucky AFL CIO and the Kentucky state building construction trades council, reducing back pay and increasing lawsuits. Henry, I, dude, when I first read this, I was like, I have to cover this. I, I read this like two days ago. My wife sent it to me. And I was like losing my mind at fucking 2 a.m. reading it as I'm trying to fall asleep, like f- foaming at the fucking mouth pissed about this stupid shit. Henry, the employment law attorney, said the bill, if passed, would negatively impact people who have been underpaid, as well as the legal system as a whole. The bill would change the statute of limitations for bringing employment lawsuits from five to three years. That means employers who underpay their employees would have to pay back lost wages for only three years instead of five, Henry said. That could drive up the number of lawsuits filed by employees who think they've been shorted, Henry said. Attorneys will file lawsuits more quickly instead of first trying to negotiate a resolution with the employer, she predicted. Which is another thing, like, the less rights workers have, the less chill they're going to be. We know this from history, because when you get all the way back to slaves, you know, you have slave revolts. (laughs) Which are pretty bad. When you get to unions, you got or, or fucking like people trying to break even just standard unions up. Then you have like union fucking wars with people. Even going a little bit more, there's there's conflict when shit like this happens. Having these laws in place and having buffers around certain aspects of work that fucking employers will try to shortcut on creates a sense of fair play between the laborer and the owner. If you don't have anything like that with that sense of fair play, there's first off no reason to not fucking organize and strike. First off, there is, if this gets passed, literally anyone who does not fucking organize and strike, like the second, the, the second that they can't, you're a fucking psycho. You're, you're, fu- you're a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? Like, it honest, unironically, like be mean to people. And this is like one of the fucking rare things I'll say. If you have people that are like, I think it's fine to get paid minimum wage. Like, and they're like a, a co-employee of you. Like, oh, I'm kind of scared to do that. If fear motivates somebody, right? And that fear is motivating them to harm your fucking bottom end. Make them fear you. Like, in 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 in, in return, right? They, they shouldn't be comfortable coming to you. Tell them to go sit with the boss. Put them back in the fucking kitchen. You know what I mean? Do not permit anyone. Do not ever permit anyone to take the fucking boss's side. <laughs> don't, don't allow it. Who the fuck? Treat them like shit. Make them eat alone. Like literally ostracize them. Because first off, anybody that's pro the boss, if you're just talking about this shit, they're going to be fucking ratting on you the second they can. Anybody that's like, well, I don't know. 725 seems like a fair wage in 2024. Don't fucking permit kindness to go in their direction because they are just fucking ops. They're, they're fucking miserable. They will ruin your life and the lives of everyone around them just for the just for the sweetest, most minuscule, salty taste of fucking boss cock. Like they will fucking do anything for it. They 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 think about it. The possibility of sucking a single fucking pube off the boss's nutsack is like the happiest day of their goddamn life. I know this is getting ridiculous, but the disdain I feel for not just bosses that are anti-labor but for anti-labor workers is insane it, it, it really goes crazy because in the military those kind of guys you know you all sleep together at the end of the night so you can kind of have like after hours conversations about like hey why don't you shut the fuck up with your good ideas you know like hey why the fuck did you tell uh the fucking boss like what we're up to like why the fuck are you talking to him you can have that conversation you can't necessarily do that IRL, but you do not have to be nice to them. Don't f- fuck civility, bro. Make yourself fucking heard because they're just going to keep taking shit away from you. By the way, you're getting robbed. You're getting fucking burgled. You're getting bent over and fucked inside out by these people. And it's going to continue endlessly. If you are a Republican, 
literally just stop voting Republican until you at least get your fucking workers rights back. Just just go labor for a fucking fraction of a second so that you don't end up having you and your entire fucking family working 12 hours a day, seven days a week at the fucking finger pincher for $10 a goddamn hour and a rotten turnip. Like th this is this is so fucking un-American. It's it's unironically like anti-American. It's anti-fucking patriotic, in my opinion, for anybody to be trying to treat an American worker like this. If you want to fucking talk about outside of the country and get all pissy about it, whatever the fuck. But this is next door. This is my fucking state. This is the Commonwealth of Kentucky. This is the time to get fucking mad. Like, if you want to fucking build a coalition, this is the shit to coalition build about, all right? Leave the confusing, difficult to understand foreign issues that you can't quite fucking talk to people about leave those at home for five fucking minutes Just kill your darlings kill your darlings is what we call it and fucking start talking to people that are close to you that might be supporting the red side of things that they're taking your fucking lunch break it's not even a joke it's your fucking lunch break the lunch break, like, how can, how fucking hard can I say that? Paid lunch breaks gone. Like, the one thing you have. The one thing you have. And also rest breaks. So I'll shout out everyone who's like, I, well, you know, I don't know, Donald Trump has something to say about it. Yeah, remember all those times you had to go fucking cry in the freezer because you had a goddamn bad day? It happens to dudes, too. You were working on the fucking forklift. And you got a call, and you had to go just sit in the freezer and have yourself a little fucking boo-hoo? You're fired now. You can't have that. You can't have the five minutes in the freezer. You can't shit without watching your fucking clock, because they can fire you for taking the shit now. They're taking everything from you. You have nothing. Fucking morons. God damn. Sweet Cheeks is fucking workers' rights. Unintended consequences. The, small, the House Small Business and Information Technology Committee, which Pratt chairs, approved the measure on a party-line vote. But even some GOP members who voted yes for the bill expressed doubts about it. Because they're fucking conservative. You can't elect conservative politicians at this point. They are like, the mo they're lemming built to the fuck the bottom. They all look like this guy. They're all fucking like different versions of this same mold. This dude doesn't have any fucking thoughts going on in his head. He's just concerned about going out on a fucking yacht. And every time somebody tells him, like, oh, you know, like, we, we got to pay another $3,000 because they were taking breaks or something, you know, whatever. He gets some fucking, like, note where he's like, Argh. starts freaking the fuck out. He pisses his pants in line at KFC. You know, the typical fucking conservative shit. God damn. For example, Representative Savannah Maddox Republican, Dry Ridge, voted yes. Voted yes on the bill, but said, there are questions that have occurred to me. I definitely want to learn more about what we're voting on. You dumb bitch. <laughs> At a certain point, can't you just, can't, you know, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like all that good old shit, you know, people are like, oh, free speech, all this shit. You're kind of a dumb bitch, right? Is there a, is there a different way to say that? Is there a nicer way to get that across that'll actually still have the same kind of punch? Because I don't think fucking the working man in the ass and doing it while not even... Oh, 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 I just had, oh, oh, I just had to vote. Oh, I have to vote right. I have to vote right. I have to vote right. <laughs> We're free thinkers over here. We're free thinkers on this side of the aisle. We, we, we try to weigh shit out. Have you heard about transgender story time? Meanwhile, the dumb bitch parade is fucking trotting down the goddamn aisle, voting on fucking bills they haven't read that strip their fucking constituents, the people that they fuck voted them into office, strip their constituents of their fucking break, their fucking lunch break. <laughs> you fucking asshole. Did you think about it? You know where you should have taken a second to read it? You goofy fuck. Fuck you, Savannah. On your fucking lunch break. At the, at the Capitol, when you, when you have lunch, maybe you could have popped it out while you had 30 minutes to yourself and read a little bit about how you're fucking the American voter. God fucking damn it, dude. <laughs> Representative Susan Witten, R. Louisville, broke with her party and passed on voting. 
Witten said she is concerned about the bill's unintended consequences. Passed on voting. Just say fucking nay. Have a grow a backbone. Grow grow your first backbone. It's a supermajority. Republicans have fucking supermajorities everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere, 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 everywhere. The whole entirety of Kentucky. All these fucking people. They will get they'll fucking ruin your whole Thanksgiving talking about like when's someone gonna speak up about the transgender daycare? When the hell is someone gonna show Hunter Biden's cock on CNN? Like I, I gotta hear that shit fucking over and over and over again. These fucking cock sucking pieces of shit can do one fucking thing right. One fucking thing. Grow a fucking backbone for two fucking seconds. Think Think about the people that live in this world that aren't them or at their fucking yacht club or where, I don't know, fucking weirdo Epstein sex cult out in the middle of fucking hazard or some shit. I don't know. There's no way that's, some, that's cool. Like, it's happening in hazard. They're, they're, they're in fucking, they're in Owensburg. Let's be honest. Or Georgetown. Actually, probably Georgetown. Like, just fucking vote no. Just be like, ah, you know what? I'm going to vote no on this because it's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. Like the dumb, it's the dumbest bill. It's just literally stupid. I, I, all I got to say is if it succeeds and it gets passed, first off, I'm fine. I fucking work for myself. I'm good. My wife has a job that's like a different job, you know? So she, she is going to be fucking suffering from this, but she was, Almost literally, statistically speaking, 99.9% of all Republican voters, like everybody that's a little fucking butthurt about, yeah, what about diversity, inclusion, and education? What about, what about this? What about that? When are we going to bring coal back? Like, why the fuck do you want to bring coal back? You can't take a fucking lunch break anymore. <laughs> unless you have the, unless the unions fucking argued it out and, there's not very many Union coal mines in fucking Kentucky anymore because there's not a lot of coal mines in Kentucky. I think, I think it's like 13, it's either 13 or like 31 total operating coal mines. Not a lot. Jesus fucking Christ. Ugh. The bill passed on a 9-4 to four vote and will now move to the House floor for a vote by the full chamber. Uh, this is an embarrassment. This, is an embar- this should, if, if Republicans were not built weak, and spineless and we're not a bunch of fucking lead poison sociopaths at this point like i can't fucking take them seriously this should kill kill the re-election chances of everybody running this year every single republican down ballot that's related to this bill should be fucking obliterated fucking obliterated but we are going to get so many fucking apologists out there. Man, I don't know. Wait, wait, you know, it's just kind of confused. Wait, 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 why does it have to be written into law? Why can't you work that out with your fucking employer? Blah, 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 Like, dude, have you ever had a fucking job? Like, this is like, you got to step past everybody that's fucking mealy mouth, whiny bullshit. I don't give a fuck. You got to step past everybody because this is like serious shit. If you're getting so fucking distracted by things that aren't even happening in the fucking country right now. Uh, or, or, or at the next, like, uh, or about the next fucking election. If you're so fucking out of your mind, oh, I'm fucking freaked out about this, that, that. They're, they're literally going to fucking, they're going to fucking put you in chains two more elections down, unironically. Like, I would not, that, that was a thing we used to have in America, right? Even not the slavery. They used to fucking literally chain people to their workstations to keep them fucking working. That's just the thing that happened. They're going to fucking bring it back. I know that there's a lot of bad shit. All right, and you want to try to make a moral stance on stuff, we're going to be talking about it some a little bit later in this program. We will. We will be talking about it, all right? But, like, dude, we are, we are going to have American kids losing hands and fucking presses again. You know what I mean? Having their fucking feet cut off by goddamn lawnmowers. They are literally not old enough to legally be able to fucking operate independently anywhere else but for fucking Philip Dipshit's fucking goddamn landscaping company. I am unironically pissed about this. Like, I'm losing my cool. I am definitely saying shit. I probably shouldn't be saying, but it, like, has to be said. Like, I have to get it off my chest because I feel fucking insane about this. It's it's literally next door. Like, you can, I walk, when I walk outside of my house, when I sit in my house, this is the political landscape that I fucking exist in, and it's coming to a fucking Republican-controlled government near you. Philip fuckboy does not come up with his own fucking shit. I'm not even going to bother looking up what PAC 
or what Coke Brothers fueled cocksuck fucking circle jerk orgy of dark money or even probably just light money, just raw fucking campaign contributions that are no better than bribes get fucking pumped into him. He probably does it for free because he fucking watches Fox News. He's a fucking, he's he's not even a fucking hua. He's just a slut for the Republican Party. He doesn't even get fucking paid for the sloppy toppy that he gives. This dumb motherfucker is not thinking that shit through. He's not figuring, he, this, he can't fucking write a bill. This dude can't fucking read. I saw his website. This dude doesn't have the ability to put together fucking legislation. He's a fucking inbred son of money. Like probably all the fucking rest of them are up there. And if you're not, stop fucking acting like one, Phil. You fucking prick piece of shit. Fuck this guy. Literally fuck him. Fuck this asshole. Fuck every fucking Republican that votes for this shit. And fuck every goddamn idiot motherfucking voter that puts these people in office. Like you're just weird. You're just fucking yourself over drag fucking drag queen story hour you know what i mean what in the fuck do you guys want on your side that's worth what you're losing like i want that from republicans oh blah, blah, blah. it's gonna be when, when, when are we gonna have justice return when is which hunter biden gonna stand for you know they're, they're trying to overthrow the democratic process we still don't know understand we don't know exactly where the votes are going dude what the fuck you guys won these re- elections you guys fucking won these republican elections all right i don't know if they're cheating or not and they're still just fucking stealing rights from you from the fucking working person if you're like if you're a fucking republican and you're like giving money to people that are like oh no just gotta just just pay attention to this pay attention to that look away look away look away what in the fuck are you looking away for like what what are you what is what is your fucking what is your drive right now i have to know i literally have to know what is worth this what is worth these losses because by the way that's not the end of it that's not the end of it kids working no overtime no overtime, kids working, steal, but who are going to, by the way, steal your jobs, you fucking morons. And uh, no lunch break, no paid lunch break, and no fucking break time. Like, wh- what the fuck was worth that? What did you get? What is the win? Is it the ability to see fucking Donald Trump have fucking, like, full-on sundowner syndrome on, like, on, on stage one more time? Is it, like, you feel like you're finally getting back at the SNL cast for, like, I don't know, making some sort of untoward joke with your accent? Like, what the fuck are you getting out of it? What, what is it? What is it? I have, to, I have to fucking know. Like, literally hit me up. I want this fight. I want this fight so bad. I am going to say the worst words to you. It, it is it is going to be a TOS nightmare. We can pay, we'll probably have it off stream. <laughs> I'll do anything. I gotta, I'm, I, it's fucking insanity. It's, it's like literally, I'll just talk over you the entire time. You probably shouldn't fucking reach out to me because I, I cannot take whatever is in opposition, like pro this, I cannot take you seriously. You're like literally a monster. You, you just fu- get, get fucking dunked on. God damn. <laughs> ah. I'm sure the libs feel very owned by this. Everyone's going to be owned in a literal sense, not even like the fun, like, oh, it's a joke and you feel bad about it. It's just like, oh, no, no, no. Uh, You're going to be literally property of the fucking Budweiser Corporation. Like, every day you have to wake up and fucking walk around and plant Durham wheat so that we can sell more Budweiser to you at the company store. Alec, American Legislative Exchange Council, is the sort the source for this sort of shit. I'm not surprised. I've, I can't look too hard. <laughs> I can't get fucking mad. I literally live 20 meters from Pinkerton's HQ. They still run good quads. Goddamn boomers didn't inherit an iota of the courage their parents had. No, they watched all those fucking World War II Nazi documentaries and took all the fucking wrong lessons from it. Like... Maybe the Nazi scientists didn't have a point. <laughs> Where is that video? Is that a video out there? You guys fucking are even more extremely online than I am. Is there somebody that's finally like made the connection between watching too much ancient aliens and other fuck dumb fucking like Nazi content on uh history channel and turning your fucking like boomer led addled parents into fucking zombies? Like it, it, there has to be a thing there. That's a pipeline. That's the, that's, that's the most true pipeline ever. Just watching fucking westerns from the 1960s 
and uh, History Channel, Nazis, Nazis alive. How did we beat them then? Fucking Once Upon a Time, the American Dream. And then eventually you just start fucking watching like way too much Jack Reacher. <laughs> fucking get it, crap. Is it saltine slur TOS? If it's a slur, it's probably TOS. Yes. They get to be racist and misogynist in public. They already have that. They already have that. <laughs> oh, they're taking your shits, base slogan. <laughs> Dude looks like Holden Bloodfeast Wojak. I mean, he's close. If he just put on a little bit of weight, he needs to fucking hit that gainer. He needs to hit that gainer and fucking get it. Can we go over Asmongold's Sweet Baby Ink video tonight? I am not talking about Asmongold if I don't have him in the fucking thumb. <laughs> that's a waste. That's a, that's a waste of like 200 plus viewers. We got some other stuff to go over too. Exactly how I feel about Christy Noem as a resident of South Dakota. Our state literally passed legal marijuana, and she said, no, I fuck, that shit drives me fucking crazy. I mean, I guess we do it in the opposite direction to the... Blah, 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 blah. We do it in the opposite direction to the fucking Republicans, but, like, goddamn. <laughs> I like, like, everywhere, you always say, oh, we need a third option, we need a third option, but you never hear that in, like, no one ever says that about red states, right? Like, why aren't we trying to run third options for all of our, like, minor council seats? I, I am to a point, I am going to say this unironically. I am to a point where I deeply believe, I deeply fucking believe. To, to the, I would probably put, like, an unhealthy amount of money on it if I could actually, it was a provable thing. I deeply believe people, like, fucking second thought. And, unironically, Hassan, at this point... I think that they're fucking ops, like unironically, unironically ops, because they will get people psycho out of their fucking minds about shit that they literally can't do fucking anything about. And stuff like this is happening in everybody's backyard right now. Everybody's backyard. Like your, your, your fellow Americans just need a hand up. Right. And I know some of you guys are like from out of country, but, but like, does the same shit not happen to you? I know, I know that it, everything's not going good over there on Turf Island, but like when any fucking coverage is coming up for your streamers, like, are you guys ever talking about what's going on there? Or is it just fucking like, are you constantly clout chasing the, well, here it is again, uh, America fucking empire of evil. Like you have to listen to this, that fucking like for the 700th fucking time and people, I don't know what we're going to do. I just don't know what we're going to do about this. Um, I guess, I guess it's just a fucking genocide. Gonna happen. Like, like I fucking listen to somebody like literally spiral out, get everybody pissed off and then nothing fucking happens. You know what I mean? Like it's a beer hall putsch, but you don't even leave the beer hall. You just sit there and get drunk and sad and then give him like $800 and go back to your job on Monday. W like what the fuck? <laughs> I think it's legitimately an op. I am so fucking suspicious, especially the more I watch some of the people, especially in their immediate like orbiting area. It's very strange. I found this thing today. Because um, I've been looking for it. Once you start looking for it, like a uh, true psycho that I am, I start finding it. And it might not be anything. But this was crazy. Uh, then, well, this was crazy. Did you, guys, did you guys see the Jordan Peterson tweet? That was fucking awesome. I thought this one was fake. You have, been, you have become pathetic beyond comprehension, AP. And the woke death will soon visit you. And the AP just said... A New Jersey city that limited street parking hasn't had a traffic death in seven years. So this was a, this was a response to somebody talking about, um, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was talking about who is and who isn't like a real leftist, okay? And this dude starts saying, nobody works for free. Okay, but like a period, like what, what, what's your proof? And he says, literally, this person literally mirrors the Biden administration talking points. What progressive leftist does that? I follow leftists, hardcore leftists, and they sound nothing like him. Follow Rev Black Network and Midwestern Marxist, um, and you will see a night and day difference. No leftist debates lesser of two evil for Biden. That's what this person said. And then I go to his fucking, his, his thing. I, have, I, I screen capped it on my phone. And it's, believe and do the right things. Official Team Trump rep for Black American. Outreach. Magadoni. Like... It might just be a bot account. I don't know. Uh, but I feel like 
there's serious op shit going on. Like, un- unironic, serious fucking op shit. Half of it's intentional, like, from, like, random companies and stuff. And then a bunch of it's just script kitty 3.0, whatever the fuck you want to call AI botters these days. Just fucking shits and giggling trying to fucking burn people's rights. Just, like, a bunch of fucking Chinese bot accounts and stuff. Uh, like, I am to a point where this is permanent with me. I am going to start treating every person that does not speak to me in fucking great English written. You, you are fucking on notice because if I can't delineate the quality of your speech from fucking AI or some sort of like weirdo fucking foreign bot poster, ignored, <laughs> attacked and ignored. So you guys better come at me with fucking proper punctuation and syntax. Cause even that one I just looked at, it's got that weird thing where there's a space and then a period after every sentence. Like, I've never seen that spelling error as much as I see it on like Twitter nowadays. And I'm very, I think, I think Elon Musk is being fucking inflated in that direction with probably like Chinese or Russian fucking influx money. That's just like, please, 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 please please put out as much fucking anti-Ukraine propaganda as you fucking can. Literally as much fucking like, uh, do you unite the left <laughs> fucking propaganda as possible? The CIA has been awful quiet lately. They have not been they have not been talking to me. We need any option in red states. I mean true. Honestly, third options in red states would work well because no one is going to vote for Democrats. That's not true. We had a we had a fucking Democrat win here. Uh Andy Bashir won um governor. Hopefully, like this more than likely this might not actually pass. Like well, it'll it might pass, but it'll get vetoed by Bashir um, at the top. He barely, kind of barely, but like by a bit. It's hard to describe how Kentucky politics works simplistically. It, you have to have a lot of background knowledge, but he was sort of guaranteed to win because he ran against well, because he ran against a black guy um, in Kentucky, which you know, there's always that. But also, he's pretty well liked, and he's pretty pro labor stuff. You know what I mean? Not like pro fucking like keeping jobs in Kentucky and keeping work going and stuff. But the company, the 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 the, the states, the Commonwealth, the the Commonwealth or the state, however you want to call it, the state is leaking jobs, leaking people, and leaking money constantly because Republicans are fucking repugnant. Like they just make the place horrible to live. And they want to turn it into like some sort of psycho fucking free work uh, f- Christian nightmare state. I don't know. But even they don't quite understand that like we're being so repellent. Like you can't you can't get people to work here. It doesn't matter how like how much fucking tax uh like like tax refunds and shit that you get. Like motherfuckers just you you can't like good doctors are not just all women. This is the other reason, by the way that they want to prevent like women and gay people and minorities from getting like high degree positions because you're just qualified to do it at that point. And you start refilling the roster with people that maybe don't want to work in a white Christian ethno state because bad. And so like it creates massive brain drains in areas like fucking Kentucky where people just don't want to go to work. Like it's hard to get a fucking, it's hard to get somebody to come and be a fucking cardiovascular surgeon in Louisville, Kentucky. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that's specifically the case, uh, but I've been talking about doctors. St- I mean, to that specific specialty, but like people just don't want to fucking live here. Like it, it fucking, it fucking sucks. You know what I mean? Like I don't hate it because I've always lived in places like this. So like I'm fucking used to it. But if you spend, you know, 12 years of your life getting an advanced degree in whatever, like is, is your first choice going to be Lexington You know, which is like, okay, compared to some of the other places. But then you get a little bit out there. Like, do you want to go practice fucking heart surgery in fucking Berea? Like, you want to go out, like, you're going to go work at a fucking rural hospital. Like, what are you? Is this, is this an act of charity? Aren't you gay? They'll fucking like hang you there, won't they? And you're like, well, maybe, (laughs) hopefully not. (laughs) Turingler. Tylering test. Must be passed to continue chatting. <laughs> yes. There there has to be. I swear to God, some people talk so fucking... You sound so fucking stupid. Don't, d- d- understand. ESL is a pass. ESL is a pass, if I ask you that. That's not me being insulting to ESL speakers. I know that it's difficult to speak a second language. 
I try to do it and fail all the time. But that's a pass. If you fucking speak English as a primary language and I can't understand what the fuck you're saying, you're on notice. Like, I, I just, I don't understand why it has to be tolerated. We were talking about this like two months ago. Like, I've, like yeah, I, fuck the illiterate. Like, I don't give a fuck. Um, what, what did you just say about the illiterate? Oh, what, you want me to write it down? What are they, they can't be offended then, can they? We gonna read to them? <laughs> fuck the illiterate. If you don't read, I sell books. If you can't read good, right? What fucking, what value do you have to me? <laughs> like, <laughs> if you're illiterate, you're literally worth nothing. Like, you're, you're just worth nothing to me. Unless it's like, like somebody coming by, like, I'm actually a multimillionaire and I was about to give you $10,000 until you made fun of illiterate people. Like, I don't give a fuck, bro. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> if you're literate in another language, that's fine. If you're literate in two languages, that's based. I can't fucking do that shit. I can barely read Spanish. My friends that work in nursing get racist shit tossed at them all the time. Yeah, it's, it's constant. They're fucking, they're psychos. Okay, I'm going to take a break, and then I'm going to come back here in just a second. I actually do got to cool down a little bit. I'm fucking heated, boy. I'm heated about it. it it's one of the things that really fucking gets me fuck, fired up is working class issues. Because it's so, fu it's literally all of us. There's no reason for us not to be. Anytime I hear anybody trying to distract from a working class issue online, I immediately just like how much, how rich are their parents? And I am almost never surprised that they're from a loaded fucking family, that they live on some sort of like government assistance maybe, and have never had a real fuck. Like they, they're just like permanently disabled or some shit. So they don't even know what the fuck a real job is. And they want to talk about the difficulties of getting around in a fucking wheelchair or some stupid shit. Like, motherfucker. Uh, I get it. All right. That sucks. But fucking the people that are building the ramps are talking. So shut the fuck up for five fucking seconds, okay? It's just such an important thing. It's so fucking insanely important. Workers' rights. It, like, literally is what makes us fucking, like, not slaves. I, I don't know how to fucking say that in a better way. And if any of this offends you, please come on. I'll, f I'll fight you over this. It will be the worst day of your life. It will be, it will be a come to fucking Jesus moment. If you're out there and you're one of those fucking like little Twitter lefties, you want to talk about fucking, you want to talk about Marx or some shit. I'm 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 not even talking directly to somebody. I'm talking to images and fucking like quotes. I will fucking come for you. It will be insane. I want it. I want it so bad. I need the first face. Peeled and, 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 and stitched to the front of my fucking shield as I storm the beaches, right? This is your, this is the first warrior I have taken. I'm fucking, I'm, it's ears and top knots. <laughs> Viking shit. <laughs> God damn. Ugh. I have to work harder in this chat. What did you say? Right to work, right to be a Christian. I mean, yeah, you can be a Christian if you want. No one's fucking doing anything about that. I don't give a fuck. Can you find how many fucking churches there are in this state? God damn. I can literally walk outside of my door. I can't throw that far. But, like, you know, if I had that kind of confidence that the, the uncle from Napoleon Dynamite had, I could, hit, I could hit a church from here with a football. I, if I can make it to the end of the street. Because you know how sometimes you feel like you could? I, could de I can definitely just shine a light on it. <laughs> right there. Oh, my God. I'll be back in a second. I'm taking a break. I love you guys. Be chill. I'll return shortly.
What in the fuck is this? What happened? What in... Why? What happened to my camera? What, what did I... Did I do something? Is there anything I could have even done that did this? Oh my god. It's... Dude, it is the worst camera ever. Holy shit. What in the fuck? Why did it change? I, I didn't touch anything. I didn't, I didn't touch a goddamn thing. And then I came back and I looked like that scene from fucking Twin Peaks The Return. <laughs> Can I purchase one? English is not my first language pass, please. Not that I know any grammar in my native language, though. Yeah, it's all good, Kusabaki. Thank you for the pie. Five pounds sterling. Um, <laughs> my father is from a Spanish speaking nation. He can hardly read Spanish. The motherfucker trips up with English too. LOL. <laughs> that sucks. But the thing is, it's like, um, it, it's not just making like minor mistakes. Some people will write to me and it's, it's next to gibberish. And I know that they haven't like tried to like go back through and double check to make sure that the word they're saying is cool. Cause everybody makes like a typo, you know what I mean? Or makes a mild mistake. But when I start seeing that like stream of consciousness, there's like two spaces before a period, nothing's capitalized. Words are like mixed up and there's extra words. Like if it starts feeling like AI, I'm going to start calling it out more often. And I think other people should too. Like, yeah, some people are going to get caught in the crossfire, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. <laughs> Man, I'm so cut off from how the right talks that I don't know if my joke's hyperbole comes off like perbole. I don't even know what, what, what jokes are you even telling. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't try to tell, don't, tell, don't try to tell jokes anymore. You might not be built for it. <laughs> yeah, you thought my uh, light bulb burned out? No, no, I just sat down, I turned the thing back on, and it had freaked out in the meantime. I, I have no idea why my camera does any of the shit that it does. Okay. So let's talk about something a little bit more fun and funny. This might be over pretty quick, and then we're going to have to talk about more dark shit. What the fuck? Somebody just responded. I, I shared that Jordan Peterson tweet earlier, and then somebody just responded to it. Bodies come like sheep to the rhythm of the war drum. Go back to sleep. Is that a song? What is that from? You got that? I thought somebody was just posting crazy shit. Stop laughing at me. What the fuck? God damn. My wife just made fun of me a bunch. I said that and she heard it from me. She hears everything. She hears me yelling in here and fucking she just turns her mic. But then I start talking and she just went, bodies. What is it? Bodies come like sheep to the rhythm of the war drum? Like, what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> oh, fuck. Jesus Christ. Okay, maybe it's a normal response. Anyway. Um, so, I, I, I alluded to this at the beginning of the night. I'm gonna fucking scoot my chair. Is it from a perfect circle? Oh my god. This one was for Weifler. It's from a perfect circle. It's from a perfect circle. Perfect circle. <laughs> okay. I haven't heard a perfect circle in forever. That's like they, they did the Imagine cover. That was like one of the like most listened to songs on my second deployment that I had. I don't know why. It's like one of those things. It just earwormed me and a friend of mine had it and I listened to it. He also listened to a bunch of Breaking Benjamin as it was. It was the mid 2000s. So the Tool Singers side hustle. Yes, yes, yes. All I know is if you walk without rhythm, you won't attract the worm. Okay, so, sorry. Um, speaking of Breaking Benjamin in the mid-2000s, 
I found out recently, um, thanks to chat, basically, that Martin O'Donnell, who is the uh, let's see, we got we got we got to we got to he is a composer and he's been working for Bungie and Valkyrie Studios uh, for forever, right? I guess I guess he worked for Valkyrie Studios one time, but he's been working with Bungie literally almost the entirety of my life. Um, his first credit is from 1997. He worked on Myth. The Fallen Lords, co-composer with Michael Salvatore. Um, Myth 2, Soulbringer. For Valkyrie Studios, he worked on Septeracore, Legacy of the Creator, which I have never fucking heard of in my life. Then he worked on Oni, and which I've seen a million times but never played. And then he worked on Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 2, 3, Halo 3 ODST, Halo Reach, Destiny, Destiny Music of the Spheres, Echoes of the First Dreamer, the musical prelude prequel to Gollum, and Gollum. Um, he seems to mostly work with somebody named Michael Salvatore and Paul McCartney. I think that's just one time. The other one is C. Paul Johnson. Uh, Paul Sebastian, they're, they're, mostly he's working with a guy named Michael Salvatore. I, I don't know what his contributions are to the music, but what I do know is he's apparently running for Congress um, as a MAGA Trump Republican, like quite literally outspokenly MAGA Trump. So he is, uh, let's see, he is in Nevada's third congressional district in the 2024 House of Representative elections running against... Um, fuck. Where the hell? Oh, I had it up here earlier. Don't worry. But either way, he has an announcement video, so we're just going to watch that. I don't know why I'm, I'm skipping to it. But yeah, the the Halo guy, the Halo composer guy, is is a is a Trump Republican. A hardcore, like literally, like says like I am a for to 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 do Trump values kind of deal. Uh, which means he's kind of probably a fucking brain dead idiot. But let's see. Okay, there we go. Of course, he's going to play some fucking music for us. Can I just say, I really appreciate being a composer and then not narrating your video, but probably making original music for it. <laughs> that's, that's wild. Hold on, how should I get... Let me let me try to do this as like ODST as I can. Our country is going in the wrong direction. Toxic divisions are tearing our families and our society apart. Stick it. Why do you stick it down there like it's a big house? Okay, if this is this guy's basic, I feel like the the other guy is very critical to whatever it is that makes Halo good because this is. This is profoundly mid. I want to help bring sanity and civility to the public discussion. I fucking hate, I hate civility politics so bad. And so today I'm announcing my candidacy as a Republican to represent the third congressional district in the state of Nevada, which is currently held by a Democrat. I can't remember her name. This music is apparently unreleased and 20 years old. That makes sense because this sounds... Less lawyers, more composers. Also, maybe just one person that does narration for you. If not you, you're, he has to have microphones, which is crazy. Like, if you're an audio guy and you can't just record your own voice, that's gnarly. But also just some other person that knows how to do basic effects can, can leave your tag up there for more than a half a second before it fades out. Be nice to the goose. What does that mean? Marty for Congress dot vote. Oh, I didn't even see this. Marty for Congress dot vote. Dude, okay. My man's trying to lean onto the fucking Halo shit real hard. Okay, this is his. <laughs> my, my man. My dude. Marty O'Donnell for Congress. Oh my God. This is the most halo shit i have ever seen this is this is shameful also he didn't program his site the right way 
So like this is <laughs> these top and bottom pieces are not behind the text and they do not scale. So only this internal piece does. And then he's got this video playing in the background. Join Marty's army. Start donating. Donate today. This is an act red. What are these numbers? Okay, I know what I know what some of this is. 117 is Spartan. John 117. 343 is the Bungie Studios. $28. Okay. Oh, all right. Everybody, if you're in chat and you're a Halo head, Doc, this is for you. We very clearly have random numbers. I can't figure out all of them, but I feel like this is a quiz to donate. $7, $28, 117, 343, $2,401, uh, $3,300 or other. What, what, my man, this is, this is such nerd shit. Whichever nephew did this for him should be ashamed. His first name was cut out. Oh no. The goose is a reference to a talk somewhat po to a talk, somewhat popular talk he did on game dev conference some years back, by the way. Do you condemn the actions of the covenant armada? <laughs> I understand that arbiter, but do you condemn the actions of the covenant on reach? <laughs> Say what you will about the Covenant's assistance during the Gravemind disaster, but what? when are you going to disavow the usage of Forerunner technology for war crimes? I'm about to have a mouth full of nuts. You're not, I'm hungry as fuck. I'm dying. Hmm. Hmm. Bungie likes multiples of seven. Seven times four is twenty-eight. Twenty-four hundred one is three four three times seven, et cetera, et cetera. Hmm. Why does that feel lame to me? They made up the flood to stop you from going to church. The real flood is the flood of Satan into people's minds. I'm telling you right now, the flood was alive. The grave mind was never here. So this is just a composer from Bungie. Um, I think it's more than that. Uh, let's go to his about. I was leaving that up for people, but God damn it, Marty. Marty O'Donnell has taken the road less traveled to running for Congress. He earned his Master's of Music degree in composition with honors from USC in 1981. Then a few months later, Marty started his first career by founding the Chicago-based commercial music and sound production company O'Donnell Salvatore Incorporated. He wrote and produced numerous film scores and the iconic Flintstones, Kids, and Mr. Clean jingles. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. That's fucking crazy. In 97, Marty embarked on his second career, producing music and sound design for video games. He created sound design for Cyan's Riven, the sequel to Myst, and all of the audio for Bungie's award-winning Myth series. In the spring of 2000, 10 days after Marty accepted a position as Bungie's audio director and composer, Microsoft purchased the studio and moved them to Redmond so they could focus their efforts on developing Halo for the launch of the Xbox. The highly acclaimed Halo series became extremely successful, with three shattering entertainment records for both single-day... He's won a bunch of awards for his audio. In July of 2007, Marty helped lead Bungie to regain its independence. His final project with them, Destiny, featured music in collaboration with Sir Paul McCartney. The standalone soundtrack, Music of the Spheres, was recorded at Abbey Road Studios. In addition to creating and overseeing sound design, music, and implementation, Marty also cast and directed all the voice acting for Bungie's games. So, like, no, it's he's 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 in there. The music and audio from Destiny have won several awards, including Best Audio and Best Music from the AIAS. He was awarded GANG's Lifetime Achievement Award in 2016. 
He's also the co-founder and co-owner of Highwire Games, their first title, Golem, uh, an exclusive title for PlayStation VR. God damn, bro. Was released in 2019. He also composed and produced Echoes of the First Dreamer, the musical prequel to Golem. Marty, now retired, is a composer with time on his hands. Oh, no. He's looking to bring sanity back to Congress, stopping the government from being an impediment to our families and more of a champion for them. Marty has been happily married since 1977 and has two daughters and two grandsons. Well, congratulations, Marty. I'm one of your fans. Paid for by Marty for Congress. <laughs> That's the sad. This is the saddest shit. Dude, just go spend time with your fucking grandkids. I this is the biggest waste of money I've ever seen. So he's running in what? Um uh no 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 no. He's running in Congress's third district. Nevada's third district, I think I saw that. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I can get rid of this. Let's see. I'm gonna bring this up real quick. Pop over to it because I know it has the link in it. Nevada's 3rd Congressional District is a congressional district occupying the area south of Las Vegas, including Henderson, Boulder City, and much of unincorporated Clark County. The district was initially created after the 2000 census. It was intended to be a competitive district, and as originally drawn, it had a relatively equal balance of registered de Repub Republicans and registered Democrats. It is currently represented by Democrat Susie Lee. It was, only one, it was one of only a handful of districts to vote for the national presidential winner in 2004, 2008, 2012, 2016, and 2020, in each case by a very narrow margin. So it is actually a swing district, like a swinging swing district. He has like, I guess he technically has a chance, but I don't know if he's a serious candidate or not, um, which this is a midlife crisis. This is a late life crisis. I mean, w when you have two fucking grandkids, like it ain't midlife anymore. You know what I mean? He's like uh, past retirement. Uh, let's see. In 2016, Clinton. What? Uh, Clinton didn't win in 2016. I'm so fucking confused. Oh, what? But the national presidential winner. Okay, okay, sorry. I just got I got mind blown. That that was that's that's the most asterisk necessary caveat I've ever seen in my life. The national presidential winner means the popular vote winner, which means nothing in America. So not they didn't vote for the um they didn't vote for the uh uh electoral vote elected president they voted for who won the popular vote. So in this case, yes, they Clinton won 50.5 um, to 43.8% uh, in 2016. Senator Cortez Masto, American lawyer. Who the fuck is this chick? Incumbent Democrat. Uh, da -da -da -da. Democrat, Democrat. Governor Sisolak, Democrat, 53.4%. Rosen, 50, 53.9%. <laughs> Vanguard Supreme Super Chat at $7.43. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tyler. I am now the proud owner of the domain, The Woke Death. I mean, <laughs> fuck yeah, bro. Why did you do that? Popular winner, so the actual winner in a real democracy. Yes, yes, in a real democracy. President, they voted for Biden. So this, it's actually a very blue district. He's he's got no chance to win. Um, basically, uh, and it seems like the margins are generally going up, with the notable exception of the attorney general race. Um, the winners are they're they're all winning by like seven seven points or more per election, right? So, like, he's got no chance. See, so, yeah, the last time they had a Republican uh, member, congressional, they had a Republican here from 2002 to 2006, and then he lost, or he lost, he won those three elections. Um, so, 2003 to 2009, they had a Republican 2009 to 2011, uh, there was a Dem. This, this results thing is very fucking confusing. 
Republican in 2011 to 2017. Retired to run for U.S. Senator. God, dude, fucking. Dude, Nevada is red as shit. Jackie Rosen, 2017 to 2019. Retired to run for U.S. Senator. Currently, Susie Lee, 2019 to present. Um, and she's she's facing re-election in 2024, I guess. Republican John Porter votes. It's 2002. So I would say I would say this is a massive waste of money. Like, it, it, unironically, if I had kids, like if I had if I had fucking grandkids, um, and I wasn't like, I mean, maybe he's got a fuckload of money. I, I don't know how much the audio director for Bungie could have. I feel like that tops out at like ten million. But if he has like stock options, I, I mean, I guess I can look up his net worth. Martin O'Donnell net worth. It's not the he's not the snooker player, right? Bungie net worth. What? We finally know why Bungie fired Marty. What? Holy shit. If this is him, okay, maybe he does have Martin O'Donnell, 68 years old, Westchester, Pennsylvania, composer. Net worth. A highly acclaimed composer hailing from Pennsylvania has amassed a net worth of an estimated $100 million by the year 2024. I have no idea how they fucking put this shit together or if it's even remotely true. Um, but his, according to Idle Net Worth, <laughs> it's $100 million. Um, another one says one to five million, which I would say is probably more. I would say I would guess unless he has like crazy stock options or something, but like Halo got big after Microsoft owned it. So like, I don't know how you would, I don't know how you would get that, but I, I feel like he would be you for a composer. I feel like you would top out at like 10 to 15 million unless you got something else. Cause you just can't make that much money in, in music usually. I still can't believe you bought that fucking domain. You're a psycho. So let's see. Uh, this is from nine years ago. We finally know why Bungie fired Marty from VentureBeat. Epic ex Bungie composer Marty O'Donnell wins epic legal fight with former bosses from VentureBeat.com. This is forever ago. God, you guys remember 10 years ago? I do, because I was there. Fucking children. God damn it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Bro, this, come on now. Come on, like, Jesus Christ, man. Dude, Marty O'Donnell, the composer who created the music for Halo and Destiny video games has won his case in a legal battle with his former employer, Bungie. Under final ruling issued today from court-appointed arbiter, Bungie must honor its agreements with O'Donnell that gave him the right to hold a considerable share of stock in the company. Okay, that's, yeah, okay, he might be worth 100 million. And the filing contains, for the first time, a description of the ordeal that O'Donnell went through as he quarreled with Bungie over issues of creative freedom and stock ownership in the company that he co-founded. He co-founded Bungie? Like, I, why didn't it say that in his thing? The court papers reveal a rare, unseen story of the making of Destiny and the internal struggles that happened between Activision, the publisher, and Bungie, the developer of the game that is now played by millions. The arbitrator found that the Bellevue, Washington-based Bungie violated its contract with O'Donnell, recognized by the parties being known for his brilliant and iconic work on video games, and fired him and, it fired him and forced him to surrender all of his stock and forego participation in the company's profit participation plan. Dude, you can't make somebody surrender their stock. That's fucking psychotic. I don't care what he did. In an interview with GamesBeat, O'Donnell said, I'm happy this is over, and I'm ready to move on. The award means that O'Donnell should be getting a payday, it's not clear how much, but the first payment of the profit-sharing award that he's entitled to for his work in 2014 is $142,500. O'Donnell, meanwhile, is not allowed to publish music from the Destiny game on his own unless he gets permission from the copyright owners. We've asked Bungie for comment on the case, and we'll update the story. He created the stuff. They parted ways... In 2014, O'Donnell said, The litigation between O'Donnell and Bungie offered a rare glimpse inside the high-stakes world of one of the best-known game development studios on the planet.
The arbiter said in a preliminary injunction, the budgie aired when it stripped the former music and audio chief, his founders shares in the game studio, which had become extremely valuable because of the success of Halo, which has generated billions of dollars and sold more than 60 million copies and the success of destiny. A great deal is at stake in establishing his ownership of the Bungie stock. His music is etched in the minds of countless gamers. McDonald created music for the Destiny game series. Activision has said it will spend $500 million promoting over the course of a decade. Following arbitration, separate but related case, O'Donnell also sued Bungie to recover unpaid wages relating to overtime and other compensation. The court awarded him $95,000. He joined Bungie in 2000 and ultimately served as... He was... He... Demonstrated substantial likelihood of proving that he was one of the seven founders of Bungie, which originally had the name Arete 7 LLC, and that the company gave him 1.27 million shares of Class B shares in October 2007. Those shares were converted into 336,375 shares of Bungie's Series B1 preferred stock in 2010, when Activision started making a lot of noise about Destiny. He also issued 48,000 shares of Bungie's common stock. And in December 2010, O'Donnell signed a contract extending his employment through 2020. As each installment of Destiny was published, O'Donnell received a share. That makes sense. On April 16th, 2010, Bungie and Activision Publishing agreed to make a five-part video game franchise dubbed Destiny. <laughs> you guys have made it to do. The original release date was September 24th, 2013. Came out a year later. Confused mu music for all of it. Talking about him making it. The court papers say that Activision had little enthusiasm for releasing the music of the spheres as a standalone work, and O'Donnell became increasingly frustrated that Bungie was making insufficient effort to release it because they were trying to they were trying to fucking not have to spend money on on marketing and stuff, so they didn't want to fucking do all that and pay him fucking shares more than likely. Bungie was getting ready to demo the game for the first time before a huge audience at E E E at E3. Oh my god. I forgot what Electronic Entertainment Expo was. Guy, remember fucking E3? Jesus Christ. The biggest US video game show. Activision was going to play the game with the music with a trailer, but shortly before E3, Activision took over the trailer work and supplied its own music rather than the music of the sphere segments. I would fucking lose my mind. I would fucking flip. A shit. I would lose. I would lose my fucking mind over that. Oh my god. O'Donnell reacted angrily and believed Activision had overstepped its proper role by assuming artistic control of the trailer music. Ryan, the CEO of Bungie, and the management shared his concern and filed a veto letter with Activision, which overruled the objection. During E3, O'Donnell tweeted that Activision, not Bungie, had composed the trailer music. He also threatened Bungie employees in an attempt to keep the trailer from being posted online and interrupted press briefings. I know that's ridiculous, but I support him 100%. I would, I would fucking lose my mind. Like, as a creative, like, that's... You just... I, I'm not gonna not be messy about that. I'm going to fuck up... If it's my moment and you've stepped on it, I'm gonna fuck it up for you. I'm not gonna let you have anything. I'm going to shit right on the stage in front of everyone. Like, I, I will fucking shut the entire production down. I will set the curtains on fire and lock the doors, my friend. The court, court, the court filing said O'Donnell believed he was preserving Bungie's creative process. And to, according to O'Donnell's view, the band of brothers ethos that inspired the group's earlier work was being damaged by the Activision relationship. Ryan and other Bungie management failed, felt that his conduct hurt the Bungie team, hurt the game, drove a negative online discussion, and violated Ryan's instructions. He also believed that O'Donnell was elevating his interest in publishing Music of the Spheres over the best interests of the company. Activision advised Bungie that O'Donnell's conduct may constitute a breach of the party's contract. Amazing. Ryan recommended that O'Donnell be fired. He wasn't fired, but his conduct was considered unacceptable in his performance review. O'Donnell objected to the review. <laughs> they let him. They gave him a pass, and he said, nah. As he noted that Bungie presented no evidence of permanent damage to the Bungie-Activision relationships, the audio team, or ultimate game sales. While Destiny was planned for a September 2013 release, it was revised, published, pushed the date back to March 2014. He returned to work after a vacation, but the audio team and his supervisor did not consider him to be fully engaged in his work. The release date of the game, meanwhile, pushed back to 2014. They got ready to fire him. 
Meanwhile, O'Donnell argued that the audio work could not be completed until the game was in a bug-free, playable state. He felt the treatment was unfair, but said he would continue to work. Members of the team complained that O'Donnell wasn't contributing as expected, and his presence was frustrating the completion of the audio work. Brian proposed to the Bungie board that O'Donnell be terminated. Bungie's first episode of Destiny was released at a pre-release, and first day orders of $500 million, a third quarter sales amounted to 6.3 million units, or 47.5 million. Users have now spent billions of hours playing Destiny. Bungie took legal action to recover O'Donnell's shares, which is psychotic. The forfeiture effectively stripped O'Donnell of all his rights that he would have enjoyed as a holder of shares, according to them. Meanwhile, Bungie began efforts to find musical publishing partners for Music of the Spheres. During that process, there's evidence Bungie management believed that withholding release of Music of the Spheres gave them leverage over O'Donnell. Bungie now claims the non-release was due to court arbitration during various events. They played part of the music that O'Donnell had created. The music is now considered to be in the public domain. Wow. Wow. But Bungie was concerned that O'Donnell had copies of the music in the form of CDs and that he was going to release it himself. <laughs> he fucking he went Kanye on him, dude. That's crazy. Bungie stockholders elected to convert their Series B1 and B2 stock into common stock. Uh, Bungie lawyers. So the arbitrator ruled that O'Donnell's rights as a shareholder should be restored. Bungie lawyers objected that if O'Donnell's shares were restored, he would be a bothersome presence at board meetings and in the company. He's going to be a shit. But that fuck suck a dick, dude. He owns part of the company that, like, shut the fuck up. That's his right. It, I, I'm so on the, I'm fucking, I'm so on this fucking MAGA psycho side in this fucking, I'm so on his side in this debacle. I, I'm losing my mind. Like, this, I would fucking, I would, I, I'm, I'm shitting a brick. In the final ruling, the arbiter said that O'Donnell is entitled to recover, at his choice, uh, 192,187.5 shares of vested Bungie common stock, the cash equivalent of 20% of his referred and common stock value does of this. Okay, what is fucking, hold on. Bungie stock price 2014. What the fuck was it called? What was his actual stock? Bungie Inc. What the fuck is Bungie? I'm clearly not fucking typing that in. Bungie Game Company stock name. Jesus Christ. I know they're using fucking AI in this shit now, and I can't take. I can't figure out what the fuck. However, you can. There is no Bungie stock price. Oh, because it's not publicly traded. So what is it? We had fucking common stock. What the fuck is common stock? I don't know any of this shit. This is a little bit out of my fucking, my wheelhouse. I just want to know how much it's fucking worth. I guess that's why I can't look it up. Oh, well. He was burnt by a large corpo, so now he's gonna fight for them. I mean, the problem was that they fucked up. You know, he was about to cut that corporate ethos. In return, O'Donnell's required to turn property that was not specifically gifted to him copies of a CD version of Music of the Spheres. And O'Donnell has all done so already. Bunch of appeared preliminary ruling by the arbitrator. His appeal was denied, and that's it. No, oh. no, nope. this is Nvidia fucking trying to sell me goddamn bullshit. Shut the fuck up, NVIDIA. So, yeah, that's crazy. That was a little rabbit hole we just went down. Did you guys have a good time on that? Wow, what? What's going on? Dude, search engines are trash now. They are fucking garbage, garbage. Remember what Halo 1 looked like at E3? I do not... I told you about the sevens, bro. I warned you. That's crazy that all that seven shit is like, fucked them. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Like they, they had to go name stuff about sevens and shit and like seven of us and do seven times seven and seven. 
and then you got too much into that fucking spirit number bullshit, and then the court used it to rule against you is 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 wild. You ever drink nuts before? It takes so long to chew these. I'm so fucking hungry. Yeah, so like... <clears throat> depending on when he sold them. Or if he did. Like his shares, like if he hasn't liquidated or whatever, I don't know how you do that. But, like, he could be realistically worth, like, 250-plus million dollars. Goddamn. That's gnarly. These people need to use what's left of their life to enjoy retirement. Running for government is not a hobby. No, I, I really appreciate somebody who's just like, I was a composer, <laughs> not a lawyer, probably don't know anything about the law. Now my time. Now it's my time. Because, I don't know. What, like, what? What do you have going on in you? Or go, going on in your life? You know what I mean? Like, when you're that rich that you're like, oh, shit. Like, the world isn't working out for me. <laughs> like... Bro, if you if you were lucky enough to make video game music and that turned into a hundreds like 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 a, a fucking eight digit nine digit whatever check, fuck off. We don't need you around anymore. All right, just go away for a bit, cause that that's a crazy amount of money. Just you just hang out. Go buy a fucking weird boat. Go buy a weird boat and drive around on. It. Hang out with Conor McGregor. I bet he would hang out with you. You can go gamble. Maybe cheat fucking Sneeko or something. That would be the unir like unironically. If that dude really wanted to push for it, the fucking um, talking to dipshits like Asmund Gold and stuff. Oh man, ugh. this guy was the uh, this guy was the. You told me he was the, the the he made the music for Halo. That's the craziest. That is the craziest thing ever. They tried to screw it. That's crazy. That's like crazy. I mean, I can't even. Uh, he's running, like, I, I'll just say it, like, I would vote for him. I don't even know what he's running for. I don't even know what he's running for, but I would vote for him. <laughs> like, whatever that. Dude, what the fuck, the breathable air in, in Asmund Gold's house has to have some crazy shit in it. <laughs> People saying, sharing some crazy shit. In motherfucking chat. By the way, this is a good time to like the stream if you're out there. All right, we're a little tiny, we're a little teeny tiny streamers today. We haven't, I haven't released any videos. I haven't fucking, I haven't tickled the fucking algorithms pink recently, and so it's not, it's not fucking all fired up for me and excited and like, hey man, I like you. So go ahead and hit that like button. Come on, come on, do it, do it to hear me scream obscenities at sitting. Uh, elected officials and for deep dives. Un apropos of nothing, deep dives into corporate lore about a multimillionaire who made the music for Bungie. That's probably like a good segment. Like, Doc, do you think? I think you said that's a good segment. That's probably a good segment. I should probably put that in the segments list. Like, goddamn. The whole firing debacle really does make. Marty O'Donnell sound like an Ayn, Ayn Rand protagonist, except he hasn't assaulted anyone as far as I know. I mean, he might have. It said he attacked, he threatened. It said he threatened Bungie employees, so if he just yelled at them, that's technically assault. Got hints of the Doom composer drama. I fucking still don't understand what the hell happened like that. 
of what, like methane and sulfur? I don't know. Like radon and this stupid gas. I bet Asmund's gold, his, his fucking house is leaking a bunch of that stupid gas. <laughs> Whatever the fuck. Okay. 1033. How are you guys doing out there? I'm kind of like, I'm kind of chill right now. My brain is my my brain is mush, man. Don't have anything. So it's just not a funny day. Not a lot of jokes to tell. I need to react to something else. I might have to switch over to an Asmund Gold thing, even though I wanted to save it for to like put it in a fucking thing. The Marty O'Donnell dossier segment. Every ounce of peanuts has seven grams of protein. I did deadlifts today, so I'm very tired. Drinking nuts is how you know Tyler's a lefty. Yeah. A bunch of people, a bunch of people in this sphere try to talk. They you know, bisexual lighting. How about your bisexual eating habits? All right. <laughs> I worked in dogs, dog sled, sled rating. It's super abusive and a ditterot is going on right now. You could react to that. Oh, I don't want to. That shit bugs me. Marty's always commenting on Halo channels that express disdain for how bad the franchise is now. Seems he's upset about his former work being botched. Maybe it's a desperate way to feel power again. I wouldn't be surprised. I would be petty too. I mean, if you're that rich, you don't have anything to do. You like already had kids. You're you're kind of like in the bonus rounds of life. Like what what else are you gonna fucking do the entire time? Just hang out, get mad about fucking politics, lose your fucking mind. <laughs> oh, I fucking I I can't believe like the Sunday stream went as hard as it was. I was like exhausted yesterday. Um. And, like, I have to do this stream so I can get four. And, I'm like, this Chai Raichik thing is not going to be that good. But, like, whatever. I'll get through it. It was the best shit ever. It was the best fucking thing I have seen in a long while. <laughs> it made the whole week. Like, I, I feel like I peaked. I peaked the whole week on, on Sunday before it even really started. Yeah, but you don't absorb as much protein from nuts as you do meat. Who gives a fuck? I do. I absorb it because I'm special. Everybody else is fucked. Grams protein to ounce nuts is the most American unit ever. Pretty much. <laughs> I need to start getting fucking... Um, I'm in a point. I've lost a ton of weight, but I haven't lost a single pound weight wise. I've just lost a shitload of fat. And I think I, I need to start transitioning into fucking eating or doing some sort of protein shake thing again. I, I tried to get along with it for as long as I could, but I've been doing, I've been going to the gym hardcore pretty much for like two years again now. Get myself my ass kicked, dude. Doggo, calm down. I just don't like talking about um, animal abuse. It fucking hurts my feelings. It makes me upset.
Still can't believe you. She showed her the point, dude. The Chai Rai Chick thing was wild. Still, based fucking chat. Based fucking chat for warning me before the porn was on. So, I want to talk about this um, flower massacre that I've been hearing about. Because it's weird. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with it. I am going to listen to Al Jazeera's coverage because i can usually kind of get an idea for how they're going to lie if they do and as always anything that happens regarding that whole conflict i just assume everybody's fucking being deceptive about it doesn't matter who they are doesn't matter how they've been affected um it just it's one of the most unique conflicts in the world that it has this much attention on it like this insane amount of attention on it and i, I literally cannot ever trust anybody's coverage of it <laughs> uh like just every time so we're gonna read this from algeria if you guys haven't heard apparently dozens killed by israeli fire in gaza while collecting food aid i really want to figure this out more than 100 killed and about 750 wounded after israeli forces fired at palestinians trying to get flour for their families as famine stalks the strip now of course everything that happens here is israel's fault regardless because they're doing blockades so like you're not letting food come in enough you're not controlling the situation you're not providing you know whatever like like if you're if you're militarily affecting a place and the popular bad things happen to the population it's basically like being in custody you know what i mean they oh, but um, us, like hummus i don't give a shit like it's your guys fault no matter how this happened regardless of even if you like actually shot them or not just want to shut Set that down immediately before even getting into it. And finally, some light content. We'll be light tomorrow. I want to get like all the hardcore shit out of the way of the week so we can kind of have like some fun times going ahead. I've got some interesting things coming up down the pipeline. I don't know. Halo Musician, we got some, we got some good side out of that. Yeah, tomorrow I've got the Fat Acceptance cartoon. Um, I want to do an old Destiny Xander Hall debate rehash on Vosh. I've got to do the Noah Samson thing versus Destiny. Dumbass Jacob Wall pref press conference on Elizabeth Warren. An anime I read that I like. And a rescoring Demon Slayer. Got some good shit coming up. We'll, 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 we'll try to keep it chill. D -d 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 More than 100 Palestinians have been killed and some 700 others wounded after Israeli troops opened fire on hundreds waiting for food aid southwest of Gaza City, health officials say, as the besieged enclave faces an unprecedented hunger crisis. The Gaza Ministry of Health said on Thursday at, at least 112 people were killed and more than 750 wounded. The Palestinian Ministry of Foreign Affairs condemning what it said was a cold-blooded massacre. Militant Ministry said it was part of the war. Of course, I don't care about that. I want, I want facts, facts, facts. People had congregated at Al-Rashid Street where aid trucks were carrying flour were believed to be on the way. Al Jazeera verified footage showing the bodies of dozens of killed and wounded Palestinians being carried onto trucks as no ambulances could reach the area. We went to get flour. The Israeli army shot at us. There are many martyrs on the ground. Oh no! God damn it! It might have it. This this might be. And until this moment, we are withdrawing them. There is no first aid, said one witness. Reporting from the scene, Al Jazeera's Ismail Al Ghul. <laughs> said that after opening fire, Israeli tanks advanced and ran over many of the dead and injured bodies. It is a massacre on top of the starving, starvation-threatening citizens in Gaza. The dead and wounded had been taken to four medical centers, Al-Shifa, Kamal Adwan, Akhli, and the Jordanian hospitals. Ambulances couldn't reach the area as the roads had been totally destroyed. The numbers will rise. Hospitals are no longer able to accommodate the number of patients. because they lack fuel, let alone medicine, hospitals have also run out of blood. Reporting from occupied East Jerusalem, Al Jazeera's Bernard Smith, oh, he's not going to make it home, sorry bud, said the Israeli military initially tried to pin the blame on the crowd, saying that dozens were hurt as a consequence of being crushed and trampled when aid trucks arrived. After, then, after some pushing, the Israelis went on to say that their troops felt threatened. And then after some pushing, comma, the Israelis went on to say their troops felt threatened, that hundreds of troops approached their troops in a way, they posed a threat to them, so they responded by opening fire. Bro, what the fuck? Israeli military tried to initially pin blame on the crowd, saying that dozens were hurt as a consequence of being trampled 
and crushed when aid trucks arrived. We've been in touch with the Israeli government since early morning and understand that investigations is underway. We'll be monitoring the investigation closely. One Palestinian man told Quds News Network that the military attack was a crime. Once we approached the aid trucks, the Israeli tanks and warplanes started firing us at us as if it was a trap. Like, what? You guys don't... God, this is why I fuck... I, I can never trust. Is it the soldiers on the ground individually? Were the tanks shooting... The tanks were shooting at you and there's only 100 people dead? Like, you should... There should not be anyone left. Warplanes? Why would warplanes be shooting that close to friendly vehicles? What in the fuck is going on here like were they far away this is terrible reporting by the way martyrs used as victims not in our sense of the word yeah. i don't like it to the arab states i say if you want to have us killed why are you sending relief aid if this continues we do not want any aid delivered at all every convoy coming means another massacre Situations beyond any words, adding that the hospital was flooded with dozens of dead bodies and hundreds of injured. The majority of victims suffered gunshot wounds and shrapnel in the head and upper parts of their bodies. They were hit by direct artillery shelling, drone missiles, and gun firing, he told Al Jazeera. How did anyone survive? This is I artillery. We have individual soldiers firing, artillery, tanks. Warplanes and drone missile strikes. I'll give drones and warplanes as the same one. What? How is fucking anyone alive at at all? Like, is it is it magic? What in the absolute fuck is going on? The mass shooting was, and it, like, we get back to the mass shooting, but like, was there shrapnel? Is it something else? Are you like mixing stuff? Like this is terrible reporting because I don't, I can't trust what you're talking about because you're only giving me anecdotal evidence from the front lines, which obviously it is what it is, but it's all contradictory, which is bad because it doesn't obviously detract from people died. Okay. Obviously. But like, if you're going to try to pin war crimes on Israel eventually and actually have them stick when you permit people to be chaotic about the way that they describe shit and be all over the fucking place. This is a routine and repeated thing. I see like, I don't, I know people are like traumatized or whatever. Don't fucking talk to them then. Like just let them be traumatized and wrong. What, what the fuck is going on? Artillery is probably mortars. I, that doesn't change anything. Artillery is different than mortars. But like, what, what the, how, what the fuck do you mean they were mortaring? How are they alive? Like, do you guys not know what a mortar is? It's, 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 it's a, it's. I have been mortared. That's not like. Nobody walks away from that. That's not like. It's not a hundred people dead. It's, uh, all of them. It, it, it's, all of them would be dead. All of them. Just all of them would be dead. It's kind of. It's like. I don't know, like, if you said, like, oh, man, 15 buses full of children went off the side of the Hoover Dam, like, 25 like twenty five kids died, you, what, what do you mean only 25 kids died? Like, 15 buses went off the side of the, what am I missing here? What are the facts that I'm not, I'm not getting? The way I heard it, before I started reading this, was there was a crush to go get food from trucks. Israelis freaked out, shot at or over the crowd and caused a stampede. And then maybe something else happened and they directly shot people that were on the ground. That's, that's the story I heard before I started reading anything. And that one made sense. This is now fucking psychotic. Like this, this, I don't know why you would publish this other than to just like incense people because this is just gibberish. Like as a person that's knows anything like this is just gibberish. It, 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 it's so disconnected. What is the IDF saying happened? I, I think they said that basically closer to mine that they said that troops attacked 
from this story, we're gonna get we're gonna read a few different stories. I, I'm sorry, I actually was supposed to have this up here. We're gonna read a few different like stories. I have a few from Al Jazeera. I think I have more from Al Jazeera up here. Um because nothing popped up from like Israel Times. Jacobin. I mean, th- th- I don't know why I even clicked that. That's that's a f- that's literally just phrased as an opinion. I don't know who this is. The Intercept, aren't they? They don't like me, right? I don't like the Intercept, right? Euromed, Israel, what really happened? This is like the case with this shit over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. I'll sign Chronicle, Press TV, Flower Massacre, what is it, Israel Times? Isn't that their kind of newspaper of record? Times of Israel. I mean, if they didn't... If 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 the Times of Israel isn't covering it, if they're not covering it, then maybe maybe fucking crazy ass shit did happen. AP, thank you, Associated Press, Jesus fucking Christ. One fucking news org I actually trust. Let's see what you guys have to say about anything. Seeking food, Israel say scene was deadly stampede. Palestinians say Israeli troops fired at people seeking food. Israel says scene was deadly stampede. Rafa, Gaza Strip. Israel, Israeli troops fired on a crowd of Palestinians racing to pull food off an aid convoy in Gaza City on Thursday, witnesses said. More than 100 people were killed in the chaos, bringing the death toll since the start of the Israeli Hamas war to more than 30,000. So they were, it wasn't even a handout station. They were trying to go, they were, they were hitting a convoy. So like people were rushing the side of a convoy that was moving. So they were stealing in a sense food. If the convoy was in motion and it was a secure convoy, if you get charged, that probably is cause to fire it. it it's like not necessarily like. I, I, the Israelis are fucking psychos. I wouldn't be surprised if that was their ROE. So this might not even be illegal. Is my understanding of the soldiers panicked and started shooting at a hungry mob? There's an interview with the Scottish IOF guy. Tyler, do you know how to read infrared images? Isn't there an image that gets shown with this thing? I, I don't know. We're, 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 we're doing all research. I'm, I'm giving my opinions literally as I learn more about this. I mean, of course, with a lot of the lefties online or the righties, I don't know, the right, rightest people, they don't care. They don't, they don't fucking cover any news. Like, I know it's like I'm always talking about lefties, but like, that's the only people I can actually hear like honest coverage of anything, like an honest attempt at coverage from anything from, you know, on. Um, and it seems like a lot of them have just been like, I, I think I know Vosh's was just like, it was a massacre. Full rip. Like, that's his like thumbnail. But, you know, I want to, I want to know what the fuck happened. Because like I said, I never trust anybody. I never trust fucking anybody on either side of this conflict. I don't give a fuck who it is. Just, it's, you never hear a straight story. I I gave Al Jazeera a chance, and I have six different fucking attack vectors happening on these people. Like, 100 people are dead, fair, but like, dude, if you were getting mortared, that's that's everyone. It's everybody's dead. Everybody's dead. That's... (laughs) <laughs> the fucking insane amount of casualties. Violence is quickly condemned by Arab countries and U.S. President Joe Biden expressed concern that would add to the difficulty of negotiating a ceasefire in the nearly five-month conflict. I also got to say, as an addendum to this, because I know people fucking freak out, this is still Israel's fault that these people are dead because Israel caused the entire situation. So Israel's fucking taking an L no matter what here. It's just kind of like the size of the L, but I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck happened actually. Gaza City, I don't care deliveries of aid reach the area this week okay aid groups say it's nearly impossible to deliver supplies in most of Gaza because of the difficulty of coordinating with the Israeli military ongoing hostilities and the breakdown of public order with crowds of desperate people overwhelming aid convoys which is more than likely what happened here the UN says a quarter of Gaza's 2.3 million Palestinians face starvation Around 80% have fled their homes. Military officials say the pre-dawn convoy of 30 trucks driving to northern Gaza were met by huge crowds of people trying to grab the aid they were carrying. Dozens of Palestinians were killed in the stampede 
and some were run over by the trucks as the drivers tried to get away, said Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, the chief military spokesperson, which makes sense. So it was not the 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 first impression I got was that it was a handout station. I thought that fucking flower, the, the story I heard in my mind, or at least that I put together from the facts at hand that I was willing to give was that it was a handout station where people started pushing to get flour and kind of like cheating the line. And that got out of hand. This is just a fucking stampede. So like that's going to kill a shitload of people that, that makes sense to the casualty numbers I'm hearing. Um, stampede. And then people are run over as people freak the fuck out and try to drive the convoy out of the way fucking uh, stay out of the street man um i get like the desperation but also like that's just what's going to fucking happen that's that's kind of like still on the israelis technically you know what i mean because they caused this situation but like i need i need additional proof now to make a massacre this is a stampede it's still a tragedy still a tragedy still is israel's fault but it's a stampede so far um Let's see. Military officials to the pre-dawn convoy of 30 trucks driving. They run over. Makes sense. Israeli troops guarding the area fired warning shots toward the crowd because they felt endangered. Okay, that is um, stupid. That's, that, that, is, that is basically a war crime. You just fired on unarmed civilians. I don't know what you mean fired a warning shot to the crowd. So you just shot people. Okay, so now we have confirmed the Israelis just shot people. There we go. Okay, the Israelis did shoot people. We didn't open fire on those seeking aid. Contrary to the accusations, we didn't open fire on a humanitarian aid convoy, not from the air and not from land. There's no way an airstrike happened. I'll tell you right now, if it was a convoy, there's no way. There's just literally no way a fucking airstrike happened. Just, I, I'm telling you, that's a fucking lie. I, I will I will literally, I don't give a fuck. All of the, in any insinuation that this was a mortar, there was mortar strikes happening at this moment, or airstrikes is a fucking lie. Because I... Unless either Israel's own army has to not give a fuck about its own people because there's no way to call that fire mission in and not hit everybody like a chaotic scene of a mob of people there on you're already being swarmed. Let's just break it down a little bit simpler. Have you guys played fucking hell divers too? You know, when the bugs run all over the top of you, if you have the auto turret that shoots up firing and then it comes down because the bugs are on top of you and it hits you that is same thing. Literally, it's you can't call airstrikes down that clo- that close. That's 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 not even danger close fire missions. That's like broken arrow, which is like, destroy me, like because we're gonna be overrun anyway. That just doesn't happen. So every insinuation, unless I see some serious evidence to the contrary, that there were planes and uh, fucking artillery or mortar strikes in this area is a lie it's just a lie it's a lie i don't care what the people are going through at all if you're lying to me you're lying to me i get why you're maybe lying to me i kind of i get the like the motivation but it's still you're still lying so that's a lie that's just a lie like it has to be unless i see some serious fucking evidence Kamal Abu Nahel was being treated for a gunshot wound at Chief of Hospital said he and others went to the distribution point in the middle of the night because they heard there would be a delivery of food. We've been eating animal feed for two months. Yes, this is bad. Israel did this. He said Israeli troops opened fire on the crowd as people pulled boxes of flour and canned goods off the trucks, causing the Palestinians to scatter with some hiding under cars. After the shooting stopped, people went back to the trucks and the soldiers opened fire again. He was shot in the leg and fell over. Then a truck ran over his leg as it sped off, he said. This is a complete clusterfuck. This is the the, reading this. I this I believe I believe 100 percent of this 100 percent of this. This makes perfect fucking sense so far. Um, Yeah, Israel fucked this up. The Israelis fucked that up bad. First off, you don't fire warning shots in that context. You. You just don't fire warning shots. It it never works with specific exceptions. I think I may have talked about this online. I have fired a warning shot effectively one time in uh in a combat zone. It was because it was part of our rules of engagement for vehicle borne IEDs, right? A vehicle borne IED is an improvised explosive device that you pack 
into a car, right? A car bomb, as other people might call it. VBIDs were a highly common enemy threat in Iraq. It's still a very, very popular go-to um, in, in the Middle Eastern fucking insurgent tool set is vehicle-borne IEDs. The standoff for it is because it's a vehicle, first off, you cannot do this to human beings. The standoff is there's a space that they can't go into, right? Usually if you're stopped, you have like ropes and shit out or not ropes, but like ribbons. It's kind of hard to explain, but you have like tape, right? That shows like, Hey, don't come within a hundred meters of us or we'll fucking, we'll kill you. We will just literally kill you. That's a dead zone. Don't go into the dead zone. Um, if you're driving, even you approach, I had to do it. You know, you pop a flare, the flare goes up right at them. (sighs) Oh shit. Stop. Stop moving. If they're moving too close or whatever, you shoot a single warning shot down low so that it fit. They'll skip off the ground basically and like hit the car. So like I shot the guy's car like that. Um, it probably was still, it was probably fine. The bullet probably went like that. I know the guy was okay. Cause he left and there was no issues. So he just approached way too quick like this right at our, our convoy around, uh, because we were driving through like rush hour traffic and it's just like, Oh shit. I didn't have time for the thing. Pop shot the ground, but he said, you know what I mean? And I'm glad because he was way too close and technically he is within, I, I could have just, I could have just unloaded like, but I didn't very nice. Tyler, very good Tyler. Um, and it was just some dipshit. I think going home to work, he's just like, Definitely, definitely not, definitely not going about to explode. So you know what I mean? That is when you do it only because that can actually stop the car. You know what I'm saying? And it's literally, Hey, don't move closer. If you do warning shots at dead zones, basically that's the only time because it's just saying, Hey, this is the area I can shoot into. I will fucking kill you if you come inside of it. Like, you know, if you're you know, on a post or something and people are approaching too closely or, or whatever. Those are the only times when warning shots are okay. And even then it's an ROE thing and more than likely not going to be the SOP shooting into crowds is a crime. (laughs) I don't know how to say that. I don't know how to say that. Um, in a, in a more clear, the Israelis that fired into or around or over the crowd are stupid as fuck. If that was their S- if that's their SOP, they're morons. They're they're unironically stupid. Um, if they were firing live fire metal jacket like hot rounds, you know they're not even doing. And if they're doing non lethal suppressives, that's the wrong non lethal suppressive to use. You shouldn't be using rubber bullets or dog shit non lethals. First off, I, I I've never seen that quell a fucking crowd. You should be using fucking tear gas or, or some sort of area deterrent to push people back. Noises are great. Like make it just uncomfortable to be around flashlights, all that sort of shit. But they let the crowd shut them down, slow them down. And then they got swarmed and they panicked. They shot the people and then they drove over them on the way out. Okay. That not only does that make sense to me, I know exactly why it happened. I know what the breakdown in command is. And I think that's sufficient to say that people, not necessarily, those aren't war crimes. Those are crimes that you committed during war. Those office, the, the soldiers, individual soldiers that shot into the crowd or fired warning shots, unless that's a standard operating procedure. And then it goes up the chain of command that, that should just be sufficient to catch an assault, like a, a, a grievous wounding charge or whatever the equivalent it is in, in their military. Like you should just be charged for that the people that crawled under the cars and got ran over that act of God. I don't know how to describe that. That's like miserable. Like I'm, we're, I'm being as callous as I can during this. I'm trying to like bring the emotions out of it. Um, that's horrible and nightmarish. The convoys should be not traveling like that. I don't know why they're, I don't know why they're doing ground convoys through areas where there's hungry people if I had to say, like, and here's the thing. This is the, re- the real reason I'm bringing this shit up. Um, the real reason I'm bringing this shit up is there is enough to say this is wrong. There's enough to say that this is wrong, that this is bad. 
and that the Israelis fucked up. You can make the Israelis apologize for this. But then we have other stories that are not being retracted because I can just fucking access them where we see people being hit by warplanes and drones and mortars and tanks, I guess, are intentionally driving into crowds, not driving on a pre-selected path that they were already going on before the crowd interrupted them. Is Israel at fault for this? Yes. This is 100% Israel's fault. People died because Israel is a fucking nation run by morons. And their military, the more I see what their military gets up to, the less respect I have for the general populace of the IDF forces. They just seem hilariously, stupidly fucking incompetent almost across the board. Like it's a weirdly universal thing. This, this is the tack to take. This is the ta- the tack to take. This is this is the, literally just describe what's happening, because first off, you can take the freaked out, pissing your pants out of it, and when you just describe it like that, when you take it like if you bring this to fucking right wingers, if you bring this to people that are pro Israel, you can say this is a fuck up. They fucked this up completely. You can describe how they fucked it up. You shouldn't be firing fucking warning shots. You should have non lethal deterrence if that's it's like you should have a fucking plan at all. Unironically, you should have just stopped and let them fucking raid the vehicles and then when they were gone, fucking bail because now you have 100 people dead and who knows how much fucking brain trauma, all the fucking people, like, you know, spiritual trauma the guys have from running bodies over. Um, you've done nothing to quell the insurgency. That, that's only going to make people crazier. And... What 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 was accomplished? This is just a failure. Like you could have just done a basic aid mission, and you somehow managed to completely fucking fail it. That's fine. Don't run supplies. That I think is probably an op. Unironically, like I wouldn't be surprised if the Israelis were doing that intentional. Basically, just like teasing a dog with food. You have hungry Palestinians. They know that they're going to try to rush the convoys, and they're baiting them into that. I wouldn't be surprised if that was a technique because unironically. The higher echelons of the Israeli army seem like they're run by literal fucking sociopaths. They're monsters. I wouldn't be surprised if that was it. And then that's a whole other conversation to have. But we're not having that fucking conversation with the other coverage that I've seen of these things. It's like this idea that this was a direct trap set, like literally, as opposed to just, you know, like, 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 like there was a free fire zone set up, but, but, but I have to describe this in terms that civilians will understand. This is being described as though it was a pre-planned fire zone ambush, right? Um, where you were luring people in with actual war crime shit, which would be luring people that are hungry with food and then killing them is fucking super fucking war crime, war crime shit. Um, that, that is what it has felt like it has been described to me. Tell me if I'm fucking wrong. But like reading this makes 100% sense and kind of goes with it. But like the, the insinuation that there was a free fire zone set up to entice and trap and kill Palestinians through direct small arms fire, through tank fire, and then through different interpretations of what happened drone airplane and and fucking mortar or artillery fire is it's insane on its face and it's difficult because like if you guys are civilians you're like well it kind of makes sense to me like yeah but like you're not making decisions in this you know what i'm saying like you're you're eventually going to have to convince people that know what the fuck this sounds like you know what i mean that this happened and when you should start saying something like these fucking people I see arguing on like the Frogan person, whoever she is, they're probably fucking just spouting this, repeating whatever the worst story is because they want to get people fucking hot-headed. You're going to fucking lose out on the chance to actually pin people down for the crime they literally did commit. This is why we lost fucking Rittenhouse could have gotten sent to jail. You know what I mean? Or at least been punished for something. But like Rittenhouse literally didn't murder anybody under the legal pretext of what murder is in America in that year. But he definitely did like negligent manslaughter. You know what I mean? Like, like there's a, there's a bunch of other crimes he just did commit 
or could have reasonably been convicted by. But when you actually have to get faced with the facts and dry and you have to sit there and listen to stuff, you know, you're going to have these people that are like, uh, they come in like, okay, so you said this, you're going to be a witness. These people will be witnesses at tribunals. These random civilians that are being named in these, this is the only way to fucking track them down. You know what I mean? Some people might not survive to the end of the fucking war. And so you're going to take what you can get. And then you get this witness who's like, okay, you're going to come to the war crimes tribunal. And then you're going to tell us what happened that day. Tell us about the planes and tell us about the fucking mortars and tell us about like, you saw shrapnel blowing people to pieces and all, all this. And like, you're going to go like, well, what happened was we were there. And then like, okay, but did this happen? Did this happen? Did this happen? Like, okay, well, like, no, it didn't quite happen like that. But like in my heart, it felt like this, you know? You're going to get into a position where your witnesses that you're valuing literally didn't witness shit because they're either confused because fog of war shit or they're lying because for some reason this entire region, Israeli, Palestinian and all surrounding is full of people that just lie like fucking at the drop of a hat for no fucking reason. I don't know what it is, but like the most unnecessary, like just literally tell the truth. Like I will add mustard to this. Like, okay, why? <laughs> hey Tyler Vodganger here. Glad to have a chance to catch a stream live. Well, welcome, 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 welcome. How the fuck do you get in a position where you feel swarmed by people trying to get food and your only escape path is straight through the crowd? The fuck must have been combined 20 IQ and all these IDF soldiers. It's like, The way that you do it is by fucking up off rip. Like I can actually answer this question. I know how it happens and it's by not planning. Like I, I had this conversation before when I was talking about other military stuff, but like military operations happen like every day in a combat zone. Like you, you'll hear like operation Thunderhawk. It sounds like super cool. Eventually you run out of the cool names because like every fucking patrol you go on is an operation. Like your con your continuous guard post that you are, are, constantly like going on and off and on and off again that's an operation that's like operation you know fucking protect mobile or whatever the fuck i think it actually had a real name the uh, the fob is an operation and all of these operations have and it, it, it's it feels like bureaucracy all the way down but it's for the best because there's rules there's rules of engagement there's standard operating procedures there's orders there's general orders there's in the moment order orders that somebody's actually telling you with their fucking face things that you have to do and that keeps fucking like a tight knit line on chaos cuz war is always trying war is always trying to fuck you in the weirdest way like it's whatever you were counting on that day whatever you didn't fucking account for is going to just fuck up and like blow up in your face it's gonna be the stupidest thing it's never going to be like oh wow they snuck into our building and like fucking slid all of our throats in our sleep kind of shit i mean i guess that happens to fucking moron morons it's going to be something like everybody all 200 fucking like all 200 fucking infantry units in my command area all have diphtheria somehow i i didn't know that they could get diphtheria but they all have diphtheria like, like that's what war is like. And the less control, like you, you can't control for everything. It's crazy. It's, it's true fucking like D 100 dice rolls every two minutes. And, and you can't account for everything. You just have to have clutched up. These fucking idiots probably didn't have a good fucking plan. They, they drove first off. They just didn't understand the zone that they're going into, which is gnarly considering they created it and fucking own it. They did a vehicle convoy with more than likely no procedures in place for what a convoy does more than likely. If I had to guess, um, I might be able to read some more of this here in a second and I'll probably, I, this is, this will be me flexing my ability to just understand the world's most basic shit to anyone that's been in the military, but it, it seems complex to people that haven't more than likely. Like this guy said, they were waiting since night. They clogged up the road. These people just fucking clogged the road up. Right. And they waited to basically, ambush in a non very dangerous way. They wanted to ambush the aid convoy so that they could get to the aid before whoever else down the street, right? It's selfish, but fuck you're starving. I don't blame them for it. So they clogged the road. The IDF or whoever's running this fucking convoy should know whether or not the road's clear at all given time. Like we gave them so much fucking money and equipment 
that they unironically, the more and more I hear about the Israelis, the less they fucking deserve to have access to any American shit. Not just because of the morality of it, just because they're too fucking stupid to use it correctly, I guess. You should have some sort of drone, some sort of air support on any convoy, especially in an area this hot. Not to just shoot people or anything fucking stupid like that. Just to fly around and say like, hey, the fucking roads are clear. You know what I'm saying? You have to know what happens. And then you have to have any... This is every vehicle patrol. Every vehicle patrol. I've seen it happen a million times. You have a series of routes, right? And your routes are basically not necessarily just the streets. Like, you go on the streets, but your route is the turns that you take, right? So we're going to go down Flounder. Then we're going to take a right at Grouper. We're going to go down Grouper, four intersections, take a right. If we have any problems here, this is where our hottest area is. We're going to take a left instead on Marlin, and we're going to go down three intersections on Marlin, hit the open field, circle up, and make sure that we have everyone there. And then from there, we're going to mount um, any sort of counter offenses that we need. If this happens, this happens. If this happens, this happens. If this happens, this happens. All the way down. You have to go through all of this shit. And the mil- and, oh, fuck it, you can say what you want about the American military. I was in that motherfucker. Um, we had to go through uh, conflict de-escalation classes that were being taught by literal getting ready to get out combat veteran Marines on their last duty assignment wearing fucking dresses and burkas slapping the fucking shit out of us in fucking 29 pumps literally walking up to mister 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 get out of my and like everyone's kind of like this is kind of fucking funny but it literally tests dudes all the way to the red and it's like yeah you can't fucking freak out on this guy and you know you can't freak out on him because he is six fucking two and weighs 250 pounds and he'll fucking like rip your fucking head back and forth because that gun you have only has blanks in it uh, if you try to do something stupid, but also it gets you ready for like when that shit happens, getting overcrowded, getting fucking like overburdened. If you know you're going through an area, like a, a city area that's going to have large, a, a large population of starving people and you have food on your truck. Um, I, I don't even know how to articulate that. I, I've never experienced anything. It's the, the most insane setup. First off, I would just say, fucking, if they show up, literally just tell them they can have all the food, roll your doors up, and fucking, like, wait it out, right? Have some sort of overwatch going on, have some sort of backup plan. But these guys are fucking, like, all the way over the top, all the way over the top of them and stuff, and completely freaked out. Just have a different route to go on. If you get backed up, have a different way to go. Uh, More than likely, the people that were on the ground that got run over and shot and stuff... I bet a bunch of them got away with flour and they're like, fuck worth it. You know what I mean? Like that was a risk that they were taking, which I respect. Um, obviously none of that situation would have happened if it wasn't for Israel, but still this segment needs to be a video because it's so hard to understand. So I have good information from a civilian perspective. I mean, and I'll tell you guys like, this is why it's fucking crazy here and listening to this shit because what well, motherfuckers just don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And it sounds insane to me. I get the planning, but, like, where are they collecting thumbs up their asses while the crowd is forming? Couldn't they be more mobile before they started shooting? Didn't you hear me read it ahead of time? They, the people said that they were there the night before. So they ambushed, they literally unarmed civilians ambushed their convoy and took it over, which is wild. That's, like, that's so embarrassing. (laughs) Like, that's so fucking embarrassing. Um... I, I just don't even know how to, I don't even know how you would deal with that other than just not starving all of the people that are in your immediate area. Um, sorry, doc. I see you. My bad. I do have this on. Um, enjoy doing your dishes, but like, yeah, they were waiting. They're just waiting in ambush for this convoy. Cause they knew where it was going to come from, which is also just bad OPSEC, you know, like, and if there's going to be that a population of people that large, you don't even need to take it anywhere. Just give it to that population of starving people. Because I'll tell you what, food trucks, You there's trucks. If you see a truck that says U.S. food on the side of it anywhere in America, that thing's full of like a quarter million dollars of fucking meat and cheese and all kinds of shit, right? And nobody robs those. 
Nobody gets 500 of their friends together and waits up in the middle of the night to try to take out a U.S. foods truck um, on fucking, you know, rural route 27 outside of the fucking distribution plant for fucking Cisco or some shit. That just doesn't happen. So, like, if you have to understand your fucking environment that you're even operating in. Understand, none of this is a defense remotely of Israel. This is a humiliation on the scale of, like, it's hard to comprehend. Like, this alone in America would be a thing that people talked about in America for forever. For forever embarrassing and then they talked about it as, as though it was embarrassing and more than likely the american military would just said what the fuck happened to a degree it would have been like forever trying to pry it out of them but they would have been like yes we fucking fucked it up schmuckatelli is in the fucking latrine for life but yeah like they just completely fucked this um the reason they were shooting the people is because they panicked and they're fucking stupid and they tried to defuse a crowd situation with live fire rounds which is what untrained people do all the time. This is a testament if you if you approach this the right way and don't freak the fuck out about it and actually think about it this is proof that Israel is incapable of conducting logistics they're incapable of conducting logistics operations in this theater they're incapable of it they are willing to put untrained and unqualified people uh behind rifles that's a hundred percent apparent and they literally do not know how to deal with these crowds or operate in this theater like in a way that makes any fucking sense like this is this is how you start putting together a much better case for israel needs to have all of its fucking shooty shooties taken away and maybe like unironically a u.s or coalition peacekeeping force put in and removing the israelis from the from the th completely like literally just taking gaza and the surrounding like 100 miles away from the israelis i would support that more because if the israelis fuck up and shoot an american th they're not going to be as good shots as all the Americans, the Americans with. And then that's going to be a whole different thing to fucking talk about. And it can fucking like probably diffuse the situation a little bit better. But UN peacekeepers for sure, because it's, it's a, because it's a fucking ongoing genocide, like literally, but like, this is just, th this is just like dumb as fuck. It, it's insanely stupid. It's insanely stupid that it happened. Like, I don't even need to read more. That's sufficient. That's sufficient. For me, it's like you, you fucked up. You don't need to add anything on. Like everything else is just mustard. I think somebody else said something. I think that the IDF has no regard for Palestinian life. So that's why they wouldn't think twice on shooting approaching civilians. But I still don't think they bombed or shot at their own convoy. No, that's insanity. If they did. More than likely, some of the trucks would have been disabled. Like that would have been a hold. It would have been. An, I, I just I can't. I can't express to you how much more different it would be. But like this Al Jazeera thing is fucking psychotic. This is, this is insane. The mass shooting, uh, using this kind of language is, is crazy. Let me see. Let me, let me, let me get a little bit deeper down in this. Mr. described it as a massacre, said more than 700 others were injured. That just, that does just sound like a, um, it sounds like a fucking, what do you call it? It sounds like a trampling event. Trampling events happen like this. It's just, if it was a mass, a massacre, massacre, like shooting intentionally into the people, like intentionally, intentionally, like your kill count's going to be way higher than, a, especially if there's as many people as the other guy kind of described, you know, enough people that people have to hide underneath cars and are still like, they can't get out in time before the car gets out because like they literally can't get back into the crowd is how I'm imagining it. Like, dude, it's, it's a free, like the bullet doesn't stop when it hits one person. It's not like, you know, call of duty or whatever, where you're like, you know, Oh, but like 25 points deducted. And the, it's, it's the ballistic object. Like a fucking, it's, it's a bullet. Like it just keeps going blah, 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 through like 10, 15, 20 people, depending on how much fucking juice it has behind it. it it's, I never mind. I'll just, let me just keep reading. I, I just can't get over it. Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Jordan accused Israel of targeting civilians in this incident. Of course, they did. This is gibberish, gibberish. Boy, Biden said, we're urgently seeking. 
Reducing alarm over hunger. Deal between this. Don't care. Don't care. Mediators hope to reach an agreement. This is just extra stuff. And asked uh, if it would complicate. What is it? He wants a deal. Hope Springs Eternal. I was on the. Praying up and whatever. Asked if the bloodshed in Gaza City on Thursday would complicate those efforts. He said, I know it will. Well, of course it will. Hamas said it would not allow negotiations to be a cover for the enemy to continue its crimes. I don't even know what the fuck that means. Medics arrived at the scene of the bloodshed Thursday, found dozens or hundreds lying on the ground. According to Ferez Afana, the head of the ambulance service at Kamal Adwan Hospital, he said there are not enough ambulances to collect all the dead and wounded, and that some were being brought to the hospitals in donkey carts. I'm not surprised. That would happen even in America. Like, ugh, a mass casualty event, a hundred dead and 700 wounded, even we wouldn't have the ambulance capacity for that. I mean, if you just think about, like, two, hot, two ambulances can only go on a road in two different directions at a time, assuming that those aren't even blocked, like, how difficult it would be to get the necessary, like, what, two people maybe? Four max um, in the back of an ambulance? So that's 25 ambulances just for the dead people, and then another fuck no yeah 100 dead 25 for them and so times 25 times 7 which is like hard for me <laughs> a thousand and 1750 175 175 ambulances is that, is that correct would it be like yeah 175 ambulances plus the other ones so like yeah, basically, basically, you would need two hundred ambulances to 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 transport everybody in that. Assuming everybody was non ambulatory and couldn't get them, that's like that's crazy. Two hundred ambulances, or at least two hundred ambulance rides, circuitous after you do like um, after you do your triage and stuff. Check everybody. Where's the video? I'm not putting any videos from this shit on. I'll watch it. The violence came more than a month after witnesses and health. I wonder if there's 200. Is there 200 ambulances in Gaza? I would, I would be surprised if there's 200 ambulances in fucking Louisville, Kentucky, where I live. And we don't have any issues like this at all. The violence came more than a month after witnesses and health officials in Gaza accused Israeli troops of firing on a previous aid distribution in Gaza City, killing at least 20 people. Mohammed Salah, the acting doctor, said they most appear to have been shot. He said the hospital can form only the most essential surgeries because it was running out of fuel. To power emergency generators. Okay, if he has 161, I'll believe this guy. If he has 161 wounded patients from gunshots, I would say they probably opened fire on the crowd. I bet it was. I I bet it was. I bet they were shooting them off the trucks. Uh, like, if I had to guess, you know, you have a convoy. It said what 20 vehicles? It's a fucking really big convoy. Um, that's a fucking log. That's a logistics train. Which I mean, I guess that's what it is. So you have that stretched out. I mean, can we look at the place where it was? I think it's at Al Rashid. So Al Nabulis uh, Al Al Nabulsi Roundabout. So Al Nabulsi Roundabout. Let's see. Let's see what the uh let's see what this looks like. Um Palestine. Okay. Okay, so it's right there. Let's see. Over here. I always have trouble fucking brain farting. Oh, don't embarrass yourself, Tyler. Uh, what's in Black Sea, Mediterranean. Here we go. There's a strip. On the Blue Sea roundabout. There's a strip. Shifa Hospital, Indonesian Hospital, Ramal. Al Rashid. Oh, thank you. I'm so stupid. Boom. Okay, so they got him right on the, the... Yeah, this is rough. 
So it's a roundabout. Let's see what we look like. Oh, that fucking sucks. So I would really like to know. Can we see on the ground? I mean, I know that's fucking shitty, but let's see what it looks like. So this is where we are. Buddy. Buddy, are we in the back of a fucking truck right now? Oh, these guys just did on the ground with their own cameras. Okay. So yeah, this is a pretty typical looking roundabout um, in the Middle East. I've been to places that look just like this. So this is, yeah, this is miserable. We got a little two lane highways. We're right on the coast. Literally, we are right on the water. So let's see, where would they have come from? I don't know if it says, but we can probably just figure it out real quick. Got that. So we come one direction, one the other direction. This is Israel. So, got resorts, Bianca Resort, Resort, Resort. Do we have any ports right here? I don't know exactly how it came to where it is. Does this tell me? Convoys and words in the Palestinian Business Minister, an organization done by Israel. It's an occurred one day after Carl Scow, deputy, uh, then told the UN that more than 500 people risk a famine in Gaza. Let's see. Here we go. Background. I don't need the background. Okay. Associated Press. Now you have tanks that escorted the trucks to the delivery location. 18 to 38. Jesus Christ, does anybody fucking know how many trucks there were? Karam Shalom checkpoint in the southern Gaza border with Israel. So they were up here, right? Isn't that one of like, that's like this checkpoint, if I remember correctly? Checkpoint Erez. Either way. Oh, I said it was a different one, didn't it? And I'm showing them checkpoint. Show me on the thing. Okay, so it's over there. Either way, so they're kind of going like this way. And dude, these fucking major highways being cut off is psychotic. And so they just went to this roundabout. Where are they going to go drop it off? Racer ammunition over the crowd from the Israeli military. The same way as the CNN reported, some swarmed the Atrox and started shooting the Atrox to escape the area, instantly ramming others and causing further deaths and injuries. Yup, exactly how I basically thought this would probably fucking come out. Southern Gaza border with Israel. Sorry, I'm not saying things right now. I'm just reading as fast as I can. As people, okay, no, but those people were just taking it from the trucks. Another survivor stated people in front of him were shot by Israeli snipers who targeted their heads, elbows, and knees. Ambush, attacked by attack drones, naval forces, and armored vehicle. Now we have the Navy involved. Once we approached the aid trucks, the Israeli tanks and warplanes started firing at us as if it was a trap. I told you guys, this is the random dude from the other one. Here it is. It's now permanently part of the fucking Wikipedia article. After the shooting stopped, the people returned to the trucks and the, oh, sh they opened fire again. Aerial footage. Oh, shit. Okay, is this what you're saying? Let me... Oh, shit. Let me watch this off... Let me watch this off thing. I didn't know that we had this level.
They're fully surrounded. They did have they did have uh, top down. So this wasn't even like a like, they were actually waiting where they were supposed to be. God damn, that's a massive fucking crowd. It's spread out like super far. So from what I can tell, like when I was showing you guys this, this uh, they're like all up they're they're right here along this little section and spread all the way up through here, like people are. And yeah, they're all over the they're all over the fucking vehicles. Two, three, what are those hot spots? Dude, I fucking hate black is hot. I know it's like easier for normal people to read, but like, God, it's just so it like turns my brain inside out. Those must be trees. Yeah. There. I mean, they're getting swarmed like crazy. This, this is a completely, this is a completely fucking, this was, this was, I, I guess I can show this. This doesn't seem like it's, uh, like it's like crazy violent or anything. So this is the, um, the top down. So you can see, God damn it, please. You can see them kind of like swarming these trucks, right? And the trucks are really spread out everywhere. And I guess they're not military trucks. Some of them look like they're flatbed semis. This is black is hot, um, where the white is cold, right? And all of these black spots are hot things. I do not know what these big hot spots are, unless it's like some sort of crazy shit. But they're spread out all over the place. So we do have drones. We do know what's going on. And so these guys should be getting like back and forth. But these dudes are kind of getting in the cab. It's a little sus. I would stay away from the cab. But if you had like some something to say about it, you know what I mean? Like... It, you you have to. This is why you have to have organizations. The military is at fault for everything that's happening here. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Because you should have fences. You should have checkpoints. You should have distribution lines. You should have all that stuff. Because otherwise, people are just going to swarm. They're going to go straight for the food, and they're going to try to jostle each other. There's probably a bunch of people. There's probably plenty of people that got hurt during this, or like got out of this fine, and then got the fucking ass beat by other Palestinians, fucking off camera, so to say, because they're like, "Hey, man, fucking, uh, my kids need that bag of flour, buddy." I mean, there's not a million people in this, but the 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 organization points, fucking, this is psychotic. And then yeah, they're driving in through the crowd. So I think this kind of this this does this does prove my point. Not like it's a fucking win or anything. Don't worry, I don't think we're gonna see any green splash. Is that a tank? That looks that that looks like a tank moving along the beach. Right for right in. These guys are just chasing this car. That's crazy. I mean, this is also, that looks like the area. I'm glad I double-checked the fucking top down. That does look like the fucking area. Um, it's another one of those things. I think like, Massacre is incorrect. Like, I, I just, I really think that Massacre is incorrect. There's a probably a better word for it. I would say... Fuck humanitarian disaster is easy like that's easy as fuck um incompetence caused this uh, more I, I triple down at this point by saying this is one billion percent there's it, this is irrefutable it's irrefutable that this is the idf's fault because i mean first off you have access to the fucking beach um and you have access to a fucking navy so you can literally get into areas that they can't be in Go fucking! You could have done this from the water more than likely. I mean, I know they went from the one checkpoint, but like, you're Israel, so like, why the fuck are you going in from that direction? This is crazy. Someone's talking about deciphering IR images. Is that what people are referring to? I think so. These clearly desperate people, clearly trying to get stuff. Um, it was completely disorganized. 
there was no egress area for your trucks. So if you have any truck drivers that are panicking, if you had a truck driver that got shot by a sniper and fell down, fell down on his gas pedal, you have set up the situation where he's still going to run over dozens, hundreds, who the fuck knows how many people, um, without, without, yeah, without even having to, yeah, I, I could say without a doubt, this is a hundred, hundred and ten percent, um, the IDF's fault. Like, like literally, I, I don't, I guess maybe you, some, like the word, dumbest shit he'll fucking moron in the world could be like, well, like they shouldn't have, I don't know, acted like desperate, hungry people. Sure. That, you know, you could have relied on that or you could have let the multi-million or multi-billion GDP world superpower maybe fucking put a fence or two up, establish some sort of permanent distribution point, something like that. I, I, I have, I, it, there, the water is there first off, you know, you can have people lined up coming up and down these roads and shit and set up a, a distribution point that's hard sided to the water. I don't know how bad the fucking tide is, but it can't be, it can't be too bad for fucking naval operations, right? It's fucking, it's a beach resort city. I'm going to guess it's probably pretty chill there when it's not a fucking nightmare war scenario. You set up a fucking beachhead and just deliver it via boat. You know what I mean? Use fucking AAVs, whatever the fuck, and just drive your stuff back and forth. Then you don't even have to use the civilian roads. Like, I mean, I, I want to hammer that home. Look at this. This is where it is. This is Israel, right? And then this is everywhere else. This is, this general area right here, like, is where fucking um, America is. Like, we, we can just, this is the fucking, whatever, the Black Sea, Mediterranean, right? It's not, it doesn't change its name. So like we can just drive literal destroyers and fast react boats and stuff all up and down here. Like we, we just dominate all of the ocean here because we're the biggest naval superpower on earth and we're friendly with Israel. So no one's going to come at you via boat area. And so you just put stuff in the water, right? And drive it up onto the land. And then you don't have to go through the the crowd of hungry fucking people. I mean, I know they had like, they said like people are trying to drive it with like local business leaders and stuff, but like that shouldn't be the thing. Like the UN has the, the boats that you don't need like high level boats. The UN has the boats to deliver this aid. You can park a humanitarian vehicle off station and then like get it in there. Like I, this is insane. Helicopters are fine. I like a helicopter dropping shit off is okay. And if it's like, well, we don't have the resources to donate, like you're fucking lying first off cuz I I know you do because every fucking G every fucking nation on earth is willing to give Palestinians food right now. You're just getting in the way of it. This is psychotic. Uh, yeah, this seems like malicious incompetence. I couldn't really I could not say it was anything else. Um I I, I can't imagine I can't imagine that anyone thought that this was a good idea. Like, it's just so stupid. It's just so fucking stupid. But, like, at least we got to the bottom of it, I think. Um, I don't really need to read the rest of these on it. Um, I'll leave that up for a second. Let me finish this AP article. Health Ministry said the Palestinian death toll from the war has climbed to 30, 35, with another 70, 4, 7, 57 wounded. The agency does not differentiate between civilians and combatants in its figures, but says women and children made up around two thirds of those killed. Yeah. Because it's all women on one side and then all the young boys on the other. The ministry, which is part of the Hamas run government in Gaza, maintains detailed records of casualties, accounts from previous wars have largely matched those of UN independent experts and even Israel's own tallies. The Hamas attack into southern Israel that ignited the war killed 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and the militants seized around 250 hostages. Hamas and other militants are still holding around 100 hostages and the remains of about 30 more after releasing most of the other captives during a November ceasefire. Violence also surges across the West Bank since October 7th. 
An attacker shot and killed two Israelis at a gas station in the settlement of Eli on Thursday. According to the Israeli military, the attacker was killed. Oh, fucking who cares then? Meanwhile, UN officials have warned of further mass casualties, and if Israel follows through on vows to attack the southernmost city of Rafa, where more than half of Gaza's population of 2.3 million has taken refuge, Rafa offensive could decimate what remains of aid operations. Please stop using decimate the wrong way. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians believed to remain in recent eating animal fodder to survive. UN says one in six. Malnutrition wasting. Oh, the genocide is being basically successful. 50 aid trucks entered northern Gaza this week. It was unclear who delivered the aid. What? Some countries have resorted to airdrops in recent days. That's a hundo. Yes. The World Food Program said earlier this month that it was pausing deliveries to the north because of the growing chaos after desperate Palestinians emptied a convoy while it was en route. Since launching its assault on Gaza following Hamas's October 7th attack, Israel has barred entry of food, water, medicine, and other supplies, except for a trickle of aid entering the south from Egypt at the Rafah crossing and Israel's Karim Shalom crossing. Despite international calls to allow more aid, the number of supply trucks is far less than the 500 that came in daily before the war. Yeah, okay. So, um, I was right. Not that there's any victory in that. Miserable. <laughs> uh... It's just isn't like a hundred miles out technically Israel jurisdiction national waters. Um, I don't know if there's a hundred miles there. That that like the the sea that that's like in in oceans and stuff and in, like inland seas are weird. Just under just inland seas are weird and they work weird. Also, like, the international law stuff only applies to people that are part, they're signatories to whatever treaty is there. So, like, other people are like, no, actually, all of that water is ours. Thank you. Shout out, China. Man, what a downer day. We'll get some better ones. We'll get, some, we'll, we'll, we'll get a little bit of an upper day coming forward, I think. This is what happens when you spend decades teaching your population that Palestinians are insapient chimps. Your soldiers don't bother with basic due diligence. Yeah, and I think it probably goes into... <sighs> I accidentally just distracted myself. I think it also goes into the rhetoric, more than likely uh, fear of being a hostage, because it is... Who knows how bad it is, because I don't fucking trust anybody until I can fucking do independent research into every single fucking fact that comes out of that entire area. Uh, but generally, the propaganda, which is well known, because that's always coming out of it, about being a hostage um, in Hamas is probably, is, is pretty fucking over the top. Uh, just like every, it's like a hostile episode. It's how every fucking description of it I hear from Israeli state media sounds. I don't know if it's like that actually maybe it is maybe it's not but the constant harping on that it probably puts a uh, don't get taken alive sense into people and more than likely a lot of that freaking out was just being covered in individuals and not knowing if some of them were trying to get food out or some of them were going to try to break the fucking window on your truck and like drag you out into the fucking street the biggest solution to this is more aid convoys, like limitless amounts of aid convoys, like just nonstop, like, hey, we will not run out of food today, which all of that food is on the other sides of these borders, right? There's, there's plenty of food. There's tons of food. We throw food away in America all the goddamn time. Fo throw food away everywhere. There's food for the Gazans. Uh, and there's less Gazans now, if you think about it, that need food and supplies. So, technically, if you just resume the amount that was going in before, it'll probably be the appropriate amount. Um, pulling down the fucking borders and ending the gigantic, freakish, open-air prison shit, probably even better. Uh, but right now, yeah, this is a concentrated starvation kill zone. The entirety of... It, I, I can't... Just seeing, like, how this is kind of operating and getting, like, a numbers description... I can't describe Gaza right now or that little area that we were looking at as anything other than a kill zone. I don't know. I don't know what else you'd be talking about. I mean, you're maintaining high pressure on people. The only way to escape is to go fucking drown in the sea, basically, or swim somewhere and hope that you can get through like some of the numerous blockades. I don't know how you fucking leave. I don't know how anyone's going to feed all of the people that would have to leave. Uh, 
this is an extermination. Well, this, okay, if this is not an extermination, this is how I would run one. Like, in a callous way. Like, I would do this same shit. Uh, constantly bait them into, uh, you know, like, doing the doing shit that lets you fucking, like, free fire on people. Sending out incompetent people not really caring if you even do well. I... I, I I can't imagine that anyone at the IDF headquarters gives a fuck about their soldiers if that's the kind of mission that they're sending them on. Like, unironically, like, that would be that would be the end of someone's entire career in America. Like, I, I can't hammer that home enough. Like, that's not, like, a light... That, that one fuck-up is not... That one fuck-up is, like, so crazy. And I know Israel's doing it again and again and again and again and again. The atrocities here and there. But like in Amer in, in the American military, that would be a thing that every other branch of service talked about for years. It would be taught in classes, people would talk about it extensively. Like the little things that you guys heard about. You know, shit that actually made it to America that people cared about is like a quarter of the stuff that like is like people fucked up while they were in Iraq and it isn't even like big shit like fucking Abu Ghraib but Abu Ghraib turned into a series of stand down classes for the rest of probably the time that the American military exists on what you can and can't do in regards to prisoners and there's hardcore rules and you will get fucking fried fried for breaking them like they'll treat you worse than you treated the prisoner if they can get away with it because it's in their best interest to do so in the mil the American military this this just fucking up that bad I, I I think I've talked about it enough I'm sorry for going on about it but like you would have to have been in the military and done any stuff anything in combat ops and known some like motor T people to kind of really hammer it home but this, if this segment is ever like, if people try to portray this as like me being, I don't know how you could, because I've called the fucking Israelis like morons five million fucking times during this segment. But it is, uh, this is sufficient. Like you can just, this kind of stuff, you don't need to add um, things that weren't happening. I mean, I saw in the fucking, I saw the fucking IR video. I, I don't know. There was nothing in that. I mean, there would be a lot of evidence if there was naval bombardment happening against civilians. I never mind. Never mind. If this happened in the 1800s, I think we'd call it a massacre. <sighs> Let me look up the definition of massacre real quick because it's just not clicking for me. And it's it's I'm not defending them. This is a complete fuck up, but. Yeah, an indiscriminate and brutal slaughter of people deliberately and violently kill a large number of people. <laughs> yeah, um, I think by this it doesn't really count either. Let's see. Basic working definition by Robert Melson. Um, by massacre, we shall mean the intentional killing by political actors of a significant number of relatively defensive people. The motives of for the massacre need not be rational in order for the killings to be intentional. Mass killings can be carried out for various reasons, including a response to false rumors. Political massacres should be distinguished from criminal or pathological mass killings. As political bodies, we, of course, include the state and its agencies, but also non-state actors. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say this is a massacre. Um, mostly because it wasn't intentional. Like it was like like it would have to be the way that the craziest people described what happened. That was like clearly didn't happen. Like that would be 
the line for massacre like you literally you kind of have to intentionally go out under orders to execute a shitload of people that's a massacre this is a mass killing um but this is more of a, a gigantic fuck up like it's really a, literally a fuck up of mass of 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 a mass thing. the the greater of what ha is happening in Israel uh, or in Gaza, I would say, is overall like a massacre. I mean, technically, at that point, it's like kind of like a you know, genocide or something. I think it's a bit semantical. I mean, we're talking about a, a definition of the word and whether or not it rises to the occasion of something. So, you're like, yeah, it's fucking semantics. <laughs> yes. Um. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Not quite massacre. If you were the country founded on eminent domain and displacement of indigenous civilian population, what reason would you have to hand out food humane? I mean, yeah. The Boston Massacre? Which is that one? How is my lie a massacre, but this isn't? Let's see. What happened in my lie? Okay, like unironically, like I, I Luke, I respect you a little less for making that comparison considering what I just read happened and then what's going on in this. Like, do you know what happened in my lie? Like, are you fucking insane? Like, why did you just compare these two things? I read like 10 seconds of, like, literally just the first fucking paragraph to, are you fucking, like, literally answer me. Are you fucking insane for saying that? Don't diminish actual war crimes by by trying to lump everything in for your, like, immediate political expediency. That That's not the right thing to do. That's, like, bad. My life, it, what, what? 26 soldiers, Jesus Christ. Yeah, first off, the there was no like humanitarian fucking effort going that was like flubbed go in there aggressively close with the enemy and wipe them out for good there was, it was literally incitement to massacre like that's just straightforward reportedly ordered the first battalion commanders to burn the houses kill the livestock destroy food supplies and destroy and or poison the wells uh, sexual assaults happened murders happened of women and children intentionally we were told to leave nothing standing we did what we were told regardless of whether they were civ civilians yeah that, that that's that and um, freaking out and running people over because you're a moron, two different things. And you have to, you have to draw a line between those because you will, you will fucking diminish the thing that actually happened and it doesn't serve a fucking purpose because anyone else that just, I just read it and so you're wrong. So like, there's that, like you're just fucking wrong. So, so you know, like, with me, like, I, I know we're just having this conversation. Like, I'm not mad at you. You don't have to, like, leave the community permanently or anything. But, like, you got to understand, if you're trying to have this conversation anywhere outside of, like, internal lefty circles, you just made, like, a terrible point. Like, it's just a dumb fucking emotional point. Sometimes the word is used flippantly, like the Valentine's Day Massacre. I think the Valentine's Day Massacre was a massacre. Wasn't it? Was, that was like an intentional slaughter of. Yeah, that's that. You know, I mean, that's a massacre. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a shitload of people, by the way. Yeah, they just went and fucking like massacred like three dudes. It, it, it goes back to butchery and stuff. 
So is the delineating factor orders from a recognized chain of command? Basically, yes. Yeah, it has to be intentional. It has to be like a moral, morally good, like intentional act to some degree. It can't be an accidental like thing. This was a tragedy and it is the IDF's fault. It's just literally not a massacre. They didn't go out there to fuck. They have to, you have to go out there to kill the people. You know what I mean? Or like immediately react and then start killing all of the people like to kill the people for the sake of killing the people while they're defenseless and more than likely not actually attacking you like these they were being swarmed you can argue like i was literally fucking like anyone that argues they were terrified because they're a fucking incompetent moron fucking israeli soldier like i, I just, i'm not fucking built for this i'm built weak i'm fucking one of the weak ones they like I was scared shitless and I fucking started shooting my fucking gun off. That's incompetency. It's murder. It's just murder. Like it's manslaughter. It's assault. It's fucking terroristic actions. It's fucking grievous wounding. It's all sorts of shit. But it's just not a massacre. Like you have to you have to use the words have definitions. <laughs> you have to use them. Otherwise, you put yourself in a position where people that do do propaganda for a living will fucking smoke show your shit and you'll just sound like a fucking psycho. Like, you just won't sound, you won't sound like you're taking it seriously. And like, it, My Life Massacre was it, insane. Insane. Like, I don't know why you, fu literally, okay, uh, that's just what I was saying. I just worded it stupidly. You gotta fucking watch out for that one. Like, for serious, for serious. Cause it's like, how is this not like the My Life Massacre is how you worded it. You know what I mean? Like how is, I'm eating Pizza Hut. How is this not like Papa John's? Like it's not a non-serious thing. Even I'm playing hopscotch. I'm being me, you know, like, but fuck bro. <laughs> Came back, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, we're gonna be chill tomorrow. Yeah, there's both the common parlance massacre and the legal definition of definition of massacre. What it's just like if you want to just say like common parlance of massacre is like ah oh, man they fucked them up it was a massacre you know you're talking about like a baseball game, but when you're actually describing the literal actions of a military unit, if it can even be fucking called that whatever the hell this coagulation of armed idiots they have over there in Israel is uh, when you're describing that and it's actually like lives like there's bodies on the ground you can't just uh, literally civilians and their inability to talk about shit correctly need to be spoken over so that justice can fucking happen it's unironically like the 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 my point in this really like because my life was the first event that came to mind that 100% fit the definition you gave. Ah, well. I'm sorry, Luke. I'm sorry. And I love you. My lie was some Genghis Khan raising Khwarazm, Khwarazmia shit. Yeah. Um, if you want a really good working definition of massacres from Americans that happened, uh, just the entirety of the 1800s, United States Army interacting with fucking Native American populations. There were massacres over and over and over again where they just literally is like go over there under orders and kill every fucking Native American person that's there. Like just, you know, and kill them, scalp them, whatever the fuck. Like, the blood meridian is a description of a series of massacres quite literally um, even when it's only like two or three people and sometimes when it's like 10 or eight you know that's that's what it is i'm so sorry for fucking dragging this down i'm exhausted and it's 131 people and this is miserable what a miserable night i'm sorry everybody we're fucking dragging this out i gotta take this stuff off i I had this idea. I had this idea that I would front load the heavy stuff that I would get like 
pissed about or like excited about on Monday and maybe do like Mondays would be like news Monday and then like we had fun days spread out but I think we need to mix it up a little bit more I think it would have been better to have an Asmund Gold an Asmund Gold thing mixed in you know what I mean <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ younger folk use emotional language to explain the reality the exact definition will likely change in the future in IMO. I don't think so. I don't think it ever will. Dargo, I'm not covering whatever you're asking me to cover now. Just on... Just on principle. Like, I'm just never going to cover it now. You fucked up. I think the colloquial usage of the word massacre just comes down to the obje observer's subjective perception of it, how much it horrified them personally, basically. I mean, yeah, technically, like, that's a working definition, but it doesn't mean it's right. I understand that's why people are saying it. But the problem with definitions, when they have an objective definition as massacre basically does, you know what I mean? You can even look through a historical record of other massacres and then append it to this and say, like, what is and isn't like it is that you allowing your emotional disposition and the heated language that you're using to become the narrative aspect of it. Leading with that will put you in a position where you're using a word wrong, basically. So if like the accepted definition of the word is different, then you're going to be in a position where you're not describing reality anymore. You're just describing your emotional state in suspension, functionally speaking which is ultimately what's going to fuck you up when it comes time to actually get stuff done the correct way because you have to be able to describe things. I mean, sorry. Like, I'm a language guy, so I will do it. I just compare everything to that. I'm not a military acoustic you are saying that you need soldiers to be like, oh yeah, this is bad. I'm a soldier, so I really know. Civvies don't know. Yeah, I just said that. Like, why are you repeating? It's true. <laughs> Fuck. What do you mean? Yeah, people with experience should talk about things they know, and people with no experience in them should, like, refrain a bit. Is that is that a crazy is that a crazy statement to make? Like maybe almost all of the people that I've heard talking about, not just this, but like fucking Ukraine and just any conflict like on the left, uh, have very largely sounded stupid as shit when they're describing things like, If that doesn't make sense to you, I guess it, it probably won't. I don't feel like I'm a little too tired to keep making more fucking analogies and getting you there. But goddamn. I greatly appreciate your honesty as frank as it can be sometimes. It's hard to separate emotion from a lot of this, and I find you and your honesty very refreshing. No, I worked in dog sled racing. You don't need dog sled racers to say that racing is bad. Your logic is trash. No, it's not. My logic is perfect. What do you mean? That wasn't even a fucking counter argument to me. What, what do you mean? <laughs> Look, I just said no. You worked in dog sled ra racing. You don't need dog sled racers to say that racing is bad, but you worked in it and you're saying that it's bad. So like, I'm just taking, I'm just, I told you my thing is having experience and I'm just believing you because you have experience. Like what, what, what fucking point did you think you're making? <laughs> Are you trying to say that appeals to authority um, are a logical fallacy? Yes, appeals to authority are a logical fallacy, but I've never said anything is specifically only because I'm in the military do I know what I'm talking about. What's right is right. What I'm saying is that all of these people that don't have any fucking military experience and seem somehow hard-coded against learning anything about how war works at all, um, are very frequently led astray because their lack of experience doesn't provide them any way to determine the deeper fucking facts of the situation. They just have no ability whatsoever to parse what the fuck they're looking at. And so they just make their assumptions based on speculation, hearsay, 
and a lot of it ends up being wrong or misinformative or just they they base their shit on emotional language instead so you just got smoked Yeah, but the vegan New York girls who made a podcast the other day don't have to have competed to say that it is, in fact, bad. No, but, like, who cares? That's what I'm saying, like... Who, who said... First off, who said that I couldn't say it? That, like, you couldn't say it. Uh, are, like, you're... you're I, I don't know if you're stupid or not. Like, dog, are you fucking stupid? Or are you fucking with me? Because you're either stupid or you're fucking with me. And one of them could possibly get you banned from the channel. And I need you to tell me right now. <laughs> Why are you trying to say I'm making points that I'm not making? I can't tell. You're basically saying that we need soldiers to know that war is bad. It's crazy. I'm not. War is just bad. I said probably 50 times that my experience is just basically telling you what happened actually. And that being able to talk about things in a factual sense will help you pursue fucking remedy against it in the future, which is unassailable, like literally unassailable. Uh, there's a lot of itch situations where people try to describe stuff where they have things that are said to them and they just take it as fact because they don't know how to parse what the fuck they're fucking looking at. It's like if I said, uh, you're a dog sled person, so if I said a dog tied to a fire hydrant is basically a dog sled, and I was like, well, any dog that gets tired to a fire hydrant is being abused. Don't you think that that would be stupid? Right? Yes. Because that's what you're defending incidentally. Because you're not listening. You, you should take with a grain of salt from now on your own ability to parse things that people are saying. Because I don't know if you're getting emotional and you're maybe a little dumb. Or if you actually are like fucking with me. If you're fucking with me, it's actually kind of funny. If you're this dumb, I'm probably gonna have to boot you if you keep talking because it's you're too fucking stupid, man. Like you're fucking the chat up. And unironically, like I, I was interested in like looking at the Iditarod stuff, but I'm go I'm not going to do it now because you fucking irritated me. Yo, Tyler, you peep at Haiti yet? Oh no, I don't want to know what's going on in Haiti. Haiti, Haiti is the most fucking. All the news is depressing. Agree in part, but you don't need to serve to be educated. No, you need to be educated to be educated. And if you serve, more than likely, <laughs> at some point you're going to learn something about the military. Otherwise, how the fuck do you know what's going on? That's the point. I'm not saying you can't talk about it. I'm saying literally I've heard people talk about this shit over and over and over and over and over again. That are lefties. And righties, too. I mean, unironically, but like, I don't give a fuck. What, they're just always wrong about whatever the fuck they're saying anyway. So I can't kind of like jump on them more often. But like on the left, and they're just wrong because they don't educate themselves in the first place. Like if you think about it, I just have like a four-year correspondence degree in war. Like I, I just have a mass, like a, a bachelor's in fucking. I just have a bachelor's in infantry fighting. Like that's basically what it is, you know, <laughs> or a vocation. So I just know a bunch of random shit that not other people don't know, but a lot of people do know it. They make decisions at the highest levels, and they've never served. Like military historians probably know as much or more than me about a lot of this different kind of shit but like I don't see that pursuit or respect for that kind of knowledge from lefties almost ever to the point where sometimes I actually see it uh, regarded with like some sort of disdain like knowing about things uh, will, will somehow like poison you you know what I mean it's a very fashy adjacent unironically mindset Subhuman, you, that's a name I'm reading. That's his real name. Sub, <laughs> you don't need to be a chef to know if the food is bad, but a chef be able to explain why it's bad more accurately than a layman. Yes, hyper basic concept. I, I'm not, I'm literally not saying anything that's fucking crazy over the top. <laughs> it fucking, it just isn't. Um, 
I, like, did you guys like not li like, did, like unironically, did people like not listen to the entirety of the segment where I'm like trying to walk you guys through how I'm figuring out like what I'm figuring out and like putting it together? Like I didn't just start with a full on assumption and then try to prove it to myself. I was trying to figure out exactly what the fuck did happen and working through it. Like, okay, give me some fucking, give me some aggressive sources again. So let me see what, what happened here. What happened there? What happened here? What happened there? Gather more and more evidence until I kind of like get a fucking full picture down. We looked at maps and everything. I described what could have possibly happened. I was wrong in a few respects, sometimes because I was given fucking everybody involved more credit than they probably needed. But my original idea got amended by the end. Um, and I walked you all through it. Like, I don't know, like, how you couldn't have figured it out. Like, it makes me disappointed in people that aren't, like, catching up with me at this point. It's very, very irritating. Well, war is bad, so learning about thing is bad, thing is bad, of course, slash S. Un unironically fucking new speak pilled. <laughs> Leftist anti-intellectualism masqueraded as virtue. Uh, an unironic issue. Like, it's it's like very irritating. I, I've seen it come up before. It, it happens with... It happens like with, with these conversations that pop up where people are like, going to the gym is fascist. Like, why would you cede me being able to do shoulder presses to the fucking fascists? You know what I mean? Um, and stuff like that. It, it, it's, it's very irritating. The whole conversation is reminding my ADHD brain of that bit in KOTOR 2 where someone is molding at Andalore about civilian casualties and he just deadpan responds, People die in war. I miss that fucking game. I miss Mandalore, dude. I can't remember what his name is from the first game. I will look up Haitian gang leaders and stuff later. We're fucking, we're, we're bleeding out here. It's a late night. Goddamn. <sighs> Oh, that's not end in negative. I'm gonna have nightmares about you guys. Oh, bad dreams. I had a good fucking workout today too. Just doing deadlifts. I'm feeling good. 225. I think I got it 10 times, but only one time. Only one set of, of 225 10 times. Then I was dying. Boy, 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 boy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna be back tomorrow at 8 p.m. If you want to have arguments and stuff with me, by the way, you should, you should hit up the Discord. I need to start telling, sending people just straight to the fucking Discord from now on. That way I can just bypass the, like, talking in chat. I, I really do. I need to start fucking, I need to start fucking debate lording you motherfuckers to death. Um, I'm going to be back tomorrow at 8 p.m. We only have two more shows left. I'm going to say it every day. And then you guys are still going to talk to me on Thursday and be like, where show? Show's not happening. We're going to have a show on Tuesday. We're going to have a show on Wednesday. And then on Friday, I'm going to go do a bunch of fucking legal bullshit. And, and then I'm going to have a new house to move all my stupid stuff into and set up a goddamn stream. So I'll be back on the Monday after that. So make sure that you come and hang out with us during and have a good fucking time. God damn it. Um, I do have some like lighthearted shit coming up. There's going to be some making fun of people. It's going to be a lot more chill. This was a rough one. This was a rough one. This was a rough one start to finish. Um, unironically, like, miserable. And I feel bad about it. I definitely deserve my fucking 128 concurrence at the end over this motherfucker. This is a, this is a shot across the bow level fucking content. <sighs> but ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching Westside Tyler Live. I have been Westside Tyler Bell. Join the Discord. Come hang out with motherfucking VOD gang. And until next time. As always, stay safe out there.